Hey what's up, it's cute what if this side. Today we will be seeing, what if Deku Bakugu and Freya were friends. Now before we move ahead with the fic, leave a like and subscribe to the channel. For future what ifs like this. Sludge Villian. Freya sat in her desk staring outside with her hand resting on her chin. She was five, three with long black hair and purple eyes. Not everyone in class knew but her father was Shoto Aizawa, Iraser head, and she was his only daughter. Her mother was another pro hero with the power of force, but she was killed by a villain when Freya was only four. Freya had her father's Iraser quirk and her mother's force quirk. Only her two best friends Katsuki Bakugo and Izuku Midoriya knew who her father was. Of the three, Freya was the only one that Bakugo didn't bully, but she was the only one that controlled him at times when he bullied Izuku. Bakugo was protective of Freya when it came to other bullies and he knew not to mess with her when she could use her quirk to stop his. Freya felt her chair get kicked from behind. She turned her head towards Bakugo, who sat behind her. She gave him a glare. He was leaning back in his chair with his hands behind his head and feet on top of the desk. He had a smirk on his face. Stop daydreaming, brat. Bakugo said. Freya rolled her eyes at him. He has used the nickname with her since they were kids. Izuku was sitting not far behind them. The teacher was about talk about their futures. Freya didn't have to worry about her future. Thanks to her father, present Mike, and her godmother, Ryuko. She got in on recommendations to UA. Hi. She couldn't help but smile. She was going to the school where her parents had met and fell in love. She wanted to be a pro hero like her father. So, a third year students. The teacher said, pulling Freya out of her thoughts. Freya looked towards the teacher. It's time to start thinking seriously about your futures and what you want to do with your lives. Izuku sat writing in his notebook as the teacher talked. I could pass out some career aptitude tests. He held up the papers and moved them away. But, why bother? A guy started growing his hand and someone's hair started growing. Freya usually stuck with Bakugo and Izuku and ignored others. The teacher smirked and tossed the papers away. I know you all want to go to the hero track. Cheers rang through the classroom. Freya rolled her eyes as she leaned back in her seat and sighed. Yes, yes, you all got very impressive quirks. But no power usage allowed in school. Freya looked back at Izuku and saw him with his head low and his hand slightly raised. Get a hold of yourselves. Freya's hair went up and her eyes got a darker shade of purple and there were groans and gasps from other classmates as some of the classmates she saw had their quirks stopped. The other classmates stopped their quirks. Freya. Classmates shouted. You should know better. Freya said. The teacher gave her a smile as her black hair fell down and her eyes went to normal. She rubbed them slightly. They were now irritated. Thank you Aizawa. The teacher said. Hey teach. Don't lump me in with this bunch of losers well except Freya here. Bakugo said. Freya pinched the bridge of her nose. I'm the real deal, but these guys will be lucky to end up as psychics to some busted D-lister. Heh. Bakugo said, looking forward. Freya sighed. Cocky asshole. Freya whispered. Students turned towards Bakugo with anger on their faces. Freya acted like she didn't know him. You think you're better than us, Katsuki. A student yelled. Let's go, I'll take you all on. I got Freya here that will help. Bakugo said. How about keep me out of this, Katsuki? Freya said, opening the book she was reading and burying her nose in it. Huh. You've got impressive test results. Maybe you will get into UA High. The teacher said. Students started complaining. But I think one of our classmates will be getting in on recommendations. Who? A student up front asked. Freya lowered her book. I will. Freya said. Students turned towards her. She looked back and saw Izuku and Bakugo looking at her in shock expressions. You. But how? A girl said. My father is Arasarhead, who is one of the teachers there along with my uncle Mike. Plus my godmother is the dragon hero Ryuko. Freya said, tossing her long hair over her shoulder with a smirk on her face seeing the shocked expressions on people's faces. Besides, I got top grades right behind Bakugo. Wow and that place has a 2% acceptance rate, but you can get in on recommendations from pro heroes. Freya is lucky, a girl said. That's why that place is worthy of me. Bakugo said. And here's the cockiness back. Freya sighed as Bakugo jumped on the desk. Freya turned to look up at him. I aced all the mock tests. I'm the only one at this school, well except Freya, who stands a chance at getting in. Freya glared up at him. He glared back. He wasn't thrilled that she didn't tell him. I'll end up more popular than All Might himself, and be the richest hero of all time. He clenched his fist and raised his fist in the air. People all across the world will know who I am. And it all starts with you a high. Your cockiness will be the death of you. Freya said with her hand resting on her head. Shut up brat. Bakugo yelled. Oh yeah, Midoriya, don't you wanna go to UA, too? The teacher asked. Freya smirked at the frozen expression on Bakugo's face as Izuku put his head on the desk. Uh, Izuku said. He looked up to see everyone looking at him. Students started laughing. Freya wasn't laughing. Midoriya. You're kidding, right? There's no way you're getting into the hero course without a quirk. Izuku stood up. Well, actually they got rid of that rule. I could be the first one, Izuku said. Bakugo growled as he turned fast towards Izuku. He causes an explosion sending Izuku flying. Bakugo, Freya yelled. Bakugo towered over Izuku as he sat on the floor. Izuku looked up at Bakugo with a scared look on his face. Listen up, Deku. You're even worse than the rest of these damn rejects, you quirkless wannabe. 
You really think they'd let someone like you in when they could've me? Bakugo said, ignoring Freya. Huh. No. Izuku said. He threw his hands up in the air. You got it all wrong. Really. Izuku backs up against the wall. I'm not trying to compete against you. You gotta believe me. Izuku looks down. It's just that I've wanted to be a hero since I was little. I may not have a quirk, but I can still try my hardest, can I? Bakugo leaned down. His hands were smoking. Freya wondered how she was still friends with him at times. You'd never be able to hang with the best. You die in the exams. Defenseless Izuku. This school's already crappy. You really want to embarrass it more by failing so hard. Bakugo asked. Students were laughing. Freya came up to Bakugo and slapped him upside the head. What the hell, brat? Leave the poor kid alone. He has a dream. Don't need to bully him. Freya said. Bakugo growled at her, but she gave him a glare that shut him up. She turned her back and went to sit down as the teacher called for orders. Bakugo glared at the back of her head. She could feel him burning holes in the back of her skull. But she ignored him. Freya felt bad for Izuku for being corkless. She was one of his true friends while Bakugo bullied him. Freya was out the door with a few other girls, talking as 3.30 hit. Bakugo stayed behind to talk to Izuku or whatever he was going to do. Freya didn't want to deal with them fighting. It was warm weather. The girls waved their goodbyes and Freya waited for Bakugo. They lived near each other and they usually walk home together. Freya checked her phone and saw a message from her father that he'd be home late tonight. She hated when he had to stay late, but the weekends were their days at home with present Mike. Brett. Freya closed her eyes and sighed. She turned to see Bakugo heading her way. He had a pissed off look on his face. What now? Freya asked. Bakugo towered over her in height, but he never scared her. The nerd is pissing me off. Let's go. Bakugo said, grabbing her arm and dragging her away from the school before she could ask him what was going on. You look a little upset. Father won't be home till late tonight. Freya said as they walked. Let's go get food and work on homework. Bakugo said. He had seemed to calm down. He still could be a jerk at times but he always was calmer when it was the two of them. Midoriya not joining us. Freya asked as they headed for their favorite cafe. No. Bakugo said. What did you do? Freya asked. Nothing the nerd didn't deserve. Bakugo said. Katsuki Bakugo. What did you do? Freya growled. I burned his notebook and tossed it out the window. Bakugo started. Freya put a force field up in front of Bakugo and he ran into it. Damn it Freya. Don't use your force powers on me. It's bad enough when you use your father's. How many times do I have to tell you to leave Midoriya alone? This is getting old, Katsuki. Freya said. Bakugo glared at her. Even when he was calm with her, they would get into arguments at times. Let's go eat before I decide to leave you and go home. Bakugo let out a low growl. Don't you growl at me. Bakugo put his hands in his pants and they continued walking. The cafe wasn't too busy and Bakugo and Freya were able to get their favorite seats in the back and got what they want ordered. They pulled out their homework. They sat for an hour working on it, helping each out. After they got their homework done they head out after paying for their bill. They walked down the street. When were you going to tell me that you got in on recommendations? Bakugo broke the silence. Freya looked at him. Because I wanted it to be a surprise for you and Deku. You already were telling people you more deserve it than others. Freya said. You deserve it as well. Bakugo said. He kicked a soda bottle. It is a lamp post popping the lid off. It was always a talk with us since we both got our quirks to be pros, but I thought you would go through the entrance exam like I will. It's what I thought, but my father told me that him and my godparents put in recommendations for me to get into the hero course. It's not like I asked for it. Freya said seeing the frustrated look on Bakugo's face. Behind them they didn't notice a sludge villain starting to form. I don't care how you get in. You deserve it more than the nerd. Bakugo said. He picked up a cup and it explodes in his hand. That nerd is starting to piss me off. Freya shook her head at Bakugo. But yet you have no issue with me and I'm good friends with Izuku. Freya said. Because you don't drive me crazy with muttering stuff. Bakugo said. Let's just start heading to. She saw movement behind Bakugo and her eyes widen. What the hell is that? Bakugo turned and the sludge villain was starting to form. He got in front of Freya. Perfect. I like a skin with some fire. The sludge villain said. Freya moves her hand to put force field up but the sludge monster moves too fast. The force sends Freya flying into the ground. She groaned and heard Bakugo gasping. She turned and her eyes widen. The sludge monster was going through Bakugo's mouth. Bakugo. Freya yelled standing up. Sludge heads her way and she blocks it with her force field. Explosions came out of Bakugo's hands. He started hitting the wall, trying to stop the sludge villain. Damn it. Bakugo got the sludge villain moving out on the street. Explosions filled the air and screams filled the air. Freya ran out and saw Bakugo struggling to get free. Where are the pros? Someone yelled. He's got a kid. Another one yelled. Freya pushed through the crowd. Pros were starting to arrive but they couldn't get close. Freya got to the front. Freya gritted her teeth. She couldn't use her eraser quirk with no physical body. Damn it. Hold on Katsuki. Freya thought as heroes surround the sludge villain. How dare you prey on a child. Death arms yells and runs at the sludge monster. He punches the sludge monster. Freya saw his hand being pulled in and the sludge monster hits death arms and sends him flying into a wall. Others tried to help but the villain keeps stopping then. Huh. Stay back, or I'll snap his neck. 
the sludge villain said. Freya looked at Bakugo. His mouth was covered with sludge and he was struggling. He lets out a yell as he breaks through, but was still being held. You picked the wrong guy to mess with. I'm gonna send you back to whatever sewer you crawled out of. Bakugo yelled. Explosions came from his hands. Let me go. Katsuki. Freya yelled and ran towards him. No don't. A pro grabbed her and held her back. He's my friend. Freya said. Explosions ripped through the streets and Freya threw up her hands to put a force field around bystanders. Keep the force field up to protect the bystanders. Let the pros handle this villain. The pro said. Freya looked towards Bakugo and saw he was looking at her. She saw a scared boy. Hold on. Freya thought. You got so much power. I really hit the jackpot. With a quirk like yours under my control, I can take All Might down with one punch. The sludge villain said. All Might. Why is he talking about All Might? Freya thought. Heroes were rescuing people in the fire. A firefighter was dealing with the fire. Freya bit her bottom lip. No one could help her even get close without hurting Bakugo. The sludge villain's mouth was now over Bakugo's face. Incoming. A pro yelled and they moved as sludge arm hits where they stood. Freya was moved by the bystanders. Stay here, kid. We'll get to your friend. The pro said. He disappeared. Freya clutched her chest, wishing she could help. Freya. Freya turned to see Izuku heading her way. My Doria. Freya said. A sludge monster. Why do you look scared? They say the villain got a kid. Izuku said. It's got Bakugo. Freya said, pointing towards it. Izuku looked and the sludge villain turned towards them. Bakugo looked towards them. Freya gasped as Izuku took off running towards Bakugo. My Doria. No, you idiot, stop. You're gonna get yourself killed. Dead arms yelled. Freya tried running, but a cop stopped her. Let me go. Freya yelled. Not this brat again. The sludge monster said. Bakugo looked and saw Izuku running towards them. Deku. Bakugo asked. Izuku was getting close to the sludge villain. You're toast, kid. The sludge monster said. Izuku threw his backpack at the sludge monster. Some of the books hit the monster in the eye. Bakugo got released a bit. He gasps for air. Kakin. Izuku yells. He starts to tear at the sludge monster. What the hell? Why are you here? Bakugo asked. I don't know. My leg started moving. Izuku said, panic in his voice. Sludge moved to take Bakugo as Izuku tore into it. Kakin. I couldn't just stand there and watch you die. Get the hell off me. Bakugo yelled. Hold on Bakugo. Freya yelled. Bakugo saw her struggling to get free from a cop. Just a little bit longer, kid. The sludge villain said. Freya's eyes widen. Someone help him. Freya yelled as the sludge villain lifted an arm to hit Izuku. Pros ran to help Izuku when an explosion came and smoke filled the area. I really am pathetic. A familiar voice said as the smoke cleared and Freya gasped. One hero that her, Izuku, and Bakugo looked up to growing up stood between Izuku and the sludge villain. All might, Freya whispered. He was holding the arm of the sludge monster. I told you the traits that make a great champion, but I see now I wasn't living up to my own ideal. All Might said. He broke through the sludge villain sludge. The cop let Freya go after she stopped struggling. All Might grabs Bakugo's arm. Pros are always risking their lives. That's the true test of a hero. Damn you, All Might. The sludge monster said, throwing out another sludge arm. Watch out. Freya yelled. All Might throws an arm forward. Detroit. Smash. All Might said, punching the sludge villain. He held onto Izuku and Bakugo as he sends the sludge villain flying. Freya quickly puts up a force field around people as the wind picks up from the punch. The wind dies down and she takes down the force field. All Might was panting on the ground. Everyone stood in silence. It started to rain. He changed the weather. Holy crap. Freya thought as All Might stood up straight. The crowd cheered. Freya ignored the talks as she watched All Might. He put a fist in the air and the crowd cheered more. Bakugo and Izuku were styring on the ground. Freya ran towards them. Bakugo. My Doria. Freya called, running towards her friends as they sat up. Freya. Izuku said. Brat. Bakugo yelled as Freya threw her arms around both her best friends and hugged them both. I'm glad you're alright. Both of you. Freya said. Bakugo grumbled about hugging as Izuku returned her hug. After. Freya stood off to the side as Death Arms and Kamui Woods chewed out Izuku and the others told Bakugo how brave he was. All Might was questioned by reporters. I'm surprised he's here. Wonder what he's doing here. Freya thought. You got a cool quirk. Thank you for the help protecting bystanders. Death Arms said, coming up to Freya. Thank you, sir. Freya said. Brett, let's get you home. Bakugo said, coming up to her. Freya and Bakugo walk away. What a day. Freya said. TCH. Bakugo said. Freya wrapped her arms around his arm. Bakugo felt his checks heat up a bit. I'm glad you were all right. Was amazing to see All Might. I wonder why he's here. Freya said. Bakugo looked ahead. I don't know. Must be important. Bakugo said. They arrived at her home. I'm gonna go find that nerd. I'll see you tomorrow. Bakugo walked away. Freya entered her home and took off her shoes. Hey kid. Freya looked up to see Shota Aizawa standing there. You're usually home by now. Sorry, dad. A sludge monster almost took Bakugo. 
and I didn't want to leave him. He's all right. All Might saved him. Aizawa didn't seem surprised to hear about All Might. Do you know why All Might is here? You'll find out soon enough. Food is in the microwave. Aizawa said, walking away. Freya had a feeling that Aizawa knew something he wasn't telling her. Guess I'll find out soon. Freya thought as she headed to get her food. As the months went before the entrance exams came for Bakugo and Izuku, Freya had gotten in with four others on recommendations. Her father was proud. Izuku seemed to die appear after school every day and Freya wondered what he was doing. He said he was doing some training after school when Freya asked what he was doing during one of their lunches. Bakugo ignored the nerd as he sat next to Freya. Aizawa was getting some coffee when his daughter ran down the steps with paper in her hands and phone to her ear. I'll be out shortly, Freya said, hanging up the phone. Aizawa saw bags under his daughter's eyes. Warning, Dad. Freya kissed his check and grabbed a travel mug for Kofi. Up late last night, Aizawa asked, trying to design my hero costume. Freya said as she poured her coffee in. You gonna be using the capture scarf like me? Aizawa asked. Freya was trained by her father at a young age after she discovered her quirk to use the capture scarf. Of course, I have to go. Katsuki is waiting for me. See you after school. Freya said, putting the top of her mug on and putting the paper in her backpack. She ran out the door. Bakugo stood leaning against the gate. You and your coffee. Bakugo said as they started walking. Freya gently shoved him. She took a sip of her coffee. I wonder what my Doria is doing after school. Freya said. Who cares? Long as the nerd leaves me alone. Bakugo said, earning an eye roll from Freya. I'm just curious. He didn't say much what he's doing. Freya said, don't start muttering like he does. You know that annoys me. Bakugo grumbled. Freya elbowed him in the side. Oh, stop that. Freya shook her head as they neared the school. Freya sat in her usual seat as the teacher lectured them. Freya was sitting with her hand in her hair listening as she finished up the sketch for her hero costume as she listened to the lecture. The drawing was coming out good. It was almost style like a gymist with a cape that flowed out a bit behind. Boots that came up to her thighs with cover like midnight had to cover shown skin. It was long-sleeved and black gloves to go with it. The outfit was a mix of purple and black in color. She described the capture scarf like her father her. She had purple goggles to go along with the suit. Her father was going to get it into the costume design soon as she got it done. Beck Hugo leaned over to look over her shoulder wondering what his friend was drawing. He was shocked to see what she wanted to have. Beck Hugo wondered if it get past her father. She couldn't help but smile as she finished it up. Not bad, Brett. I still got to design mine. Bakugo whispered. Freya smirked. Bakugo leaned back in the chair. Freya looked back at Izuku and raised an eyebrow. He looked just as bad as her father when it came to no sleep. He looked exhausted and not paying attention to the teacher. Freya felt bad for her friend. Freya turned back to the front. A muttering comes from the back. That get me about 98 days of actual training, even at my most efficient. Deku was muttering. The nerd is doing it again. Bakugo growled lightly. Freya rolled her eyes. She swore the kid didn't know when he was muttering out loud at times. I can get in around 5 hours every morning and night so that's 490 hours. Also I have to make sure I'm hitting every muscle group, which means I need to pay attention to the type of work I'm doing on the beach every day. Izuku said. Everyone was looking at him. Freya wondered what he was doing that was making him work on his muscles. I could start sneaking in extra workouts and lifting weights on my own, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. That could help me focus my workouts and isolate specific muscles. But it'll cost me time. Lots of it. I'll have to cut back on the hours of sleep. Freya didn't hear the rest as the teacher reached his hand out towards Izuku. Hey, Midoriya. The teacher said. He hit Izuku on top of the head. Izuku looked up with his hands covering his mouth. He saw his classmates looking at him. I know you had a run-in with a villain. But pull yourself together, kid. If you really want to get into Yue, you might actually have to know something. Kids were sniggering. Freya looked at Bakugo to see him glaring out the window. Freya shook her head at Izuku. The day of the entrance exam. Aizawa had already left to get to the school early. Freya was waiting out Bakugo's house. She was gonna walk him to the school. Plus her father had told her to message him and he'll get her in the viewing room to watch since both her best friends are in the entrance exam. Brett. Freya smiled when she saw Bakugo heading her way. You ready? Freya said. Bakugo smirked. Been waiting for this day for months. Bakugo said as they started walking towards UA. You'll do fine. You did well in the demos. Freya said with a smile. Bakugo smirked. Wish you were taking it as well, brat. But by the time this exam is over we both will be in the hero course together. Bakugo said. They arrived at UA. Izuku was ahead of them. Stupid Deku. Bakugo sadi. Izuku turns and sees Bakugo and Freya heading towards him. Kaken. Izuku said. Get out of my way, now, before I set you on fire. Bakugo said. Katsuki. Freya said as Bakugo shoves past Izuku. Good morning. Um, let's just both do our best out there, okay? Good luck. Izuku said. Freya, I'll see you after the exam. Bakugo growled. Freya checked her phone to see her father had responded to meet him at the staff room. Good luck, my Doria. Freya said, hugging her best friend. Thanks, Freya. Izuku said. Freya got into the school as students were arriving for the exam. There's my favorite niece. A female voice said. 
Freya turned and smiled. The R-rated hero was heading her way. Hey Midnight, was heading to meet Dad. Freya said, he's waiting for you. Your Uncle Mike will say hi after he's done with the recruits later. Midnight said, hugging Freya. Having a father at UA, Freya knew most of the teachers. She knew present Mike and Midnight since they went to school with her parents. I'll see you when the new school year begins. Freya heads to the staff room. Aizawa opened the door when she knocked. Your friends arrive. Aizawa asked. They did. Bakugo is pumped and Izuku is nervous. Freya said as they walked to the viewing room. They are in the written test stage right now, but you can sit in the viewing room with us till they go out to the course. Aizawa said as he opened the door to he viewing room. Freya stepped in with her father right behind her. Aizawa went to talk to the principal as Freya stood towards the back. The room was filled with teachers. Midnight came back into the room. She winked at Freya as she went to her seat. It's good to see you Freya. The principal said coming over. Thank you for letting me watch. Freya said. He nodded and went to get a seat. Freya went to stand by Aizawa as he stands leaning against the wall. It wasn't long before the students were sent to designated areas. Bakugo and Izuku were in different areas. Soon it was time to start. Freya watched Izuku's area. Izuku seemed to be running around like a chicken with his head cut off. Students in his area were destroys the robots for points and Izuku had none. I'm not surprised there with him not having a quirk. Freya thought. Her eyes wandered to Bakugo's section. He kept gathering robots in an area and destroying them. He wiped sweat from his face with a smirk on his face. Freya felt her heart leap in her chest. She knew for a while since grade school she had a crush on him, but felt like he liked her as a friend. His cocky grin. He's gonna get in. Freya had a proud look on her face. Come on, my Doria. You can do it. Freya's eyes widened as a zero-pointer showed up in front of Izuku and the others. Izuku went to run but saw a girl with short hair laying on the ground. Two minutes remaining. You think your friend can pull it off? Aizawa said. Freya wondered if all Izuku was doing till today was training to get ready for today, but she wasn't sure now with not getting any points. Izuku suddenly runs towards the zero-pointer as the girl struggles to get up. He's not, Freya said. He hunches down and launches into the air. Freya's eyes widen as she sees Izuku's hand glowed and his shirt arm ripped and his arm glowed. He punches the machine and it starts to explode. What the? Isn't that the kid without the quirk? Aizawa said. Freya stood in shock. How? How did he get that power? He was quirkless. Did he get his quirk late? Freya thought. Aizawa saw the shocked look on his daughter's face and knew he didn't need an answer. Izuku was falling with his arm and legs busted. Freya put a hand to her mouth as Izuku fell fast towards the ground. The girl that he rescued used a broken machine part in the air with her on top and she slapped Izuku in the face. He seemed to slow and fall to the ground with the girl. The girl puked. Dad, will he be alright? Freya asked, looking at her father. Recovery girl is on standby. He'll be fine. Look, Aizawa said. Freya looked at the screen to see recovery girl handing out gummies to the students. She walked up to Izuku and did her healing kiss to heal him. Freya sighed in relief. She saw a man sitting next to the principal watching with interest. His body was like a skeleton. Who is he? Freya thought. You should get going. The others will be heading out and they don't want you to spoil the results of your friends. Aizawa said. Yes, dad. I'll see you at home. Freya said as she stepped out. She headed out to the courtyard and stood waiting. Students started to come out. Freya. Bakugo heads her way. A determined look on his face. They started walking home. You were amazing out there. Not surprised. Freya said. TCH. Those extras didn't stand a chance against me. Bakugo said with a smirk on his face. Freya didn't tell him how Izuku did and that he got his quirk late. She decided that he'd find out himself. She couldn't help but hide a smile. Even if it came late. He can live his dream of being a hero if he gets into UA. Freya thought. Brett, stop daydreaming. We're almost to your house. Bakugo said, snapping Freya out of her thoughts. It was a week and Bakugo and Izuku haven't heard anything. Her father wasn't saying anything when the results would release. Freya hoped it would be soon. She saw the bags under Izuku's eyes. She had messaged him to tell him he had done a good job and she was proud. Freya figured when he was ready, he would tell her how he got his quirk. Freya sat at her desk on her laptop doing some research on some homework. Her phone went off. Freya grabbed her phone and saw it was Izuku. Hey my Doria. Freya said. I got in, Freya. Izuku said. It sounded like he had been crying. I got into UA. That's awesome my Doria. I'm so happy for you. You just get your results today. Freya asked. I did. My Doria said. Then Bakugo. A fierce knocking came on the front door. Freya recognized the knock. Speak of the devil. Congratulations. I'll see you in school tomorrow. Freya hung up and quickly got out of her chair and head for the front door. She barely opened the door when Bakugo hugged her hard. Katsuki. I can't breathe. Bakugo let her go. He had a huge smile on his face. Looks like we both will be in the hero course in UA. Bakugo said. I knew you would get in. Now we are close to becoming pros. Freya said. Hopefully the nerd doesn't get in. Bakugo said. Freya had to bite her check. She wondered how he take it when it's revealed all three will be joining UA. I'll see you tomorrow at school. Bakugo walked away. Freya closed the door and leaned against the door. She walked towards the living room and picked up a photo. It was a photo of a young woman holding a baby Freya. She had purple hair and purple eyes like Freya had. 
I did it, mom. I'm in UA along with my friends. I know you'll be proud. Freya said, touching her mom's photo. Freya got to school early. Her father had pulled an all-nighter at the school to get ready and Freya had to make sure he got to class on time. He was wrapped up in his sleeping bag when she found him. Freya was wearing the student uniform. She walked down the hall to 1A. She saw Izuku ahead of her. My Doria, Freya called. Izuku turned and smiled seeing his friend heading his way. Freya, glad you're here. Izuku said. You too. You look so excited. Freya said. We got into the school of our dreams. We are close to being heroes. Izuku said. Let's get in the classroom. Freya said. She pushed the door open. Take your feet off of that desk now. A blue-haired boy with glasses yelled at Bakugo who was sitting at one of the desks with his feet on his desk. Freya sighed as Bakugo smirked at the glasses dude. Huh, Bakugo said. It's the first day and you're already disrespecting this academy by scuffing school property, you cretin. The boy said. First day and he's already causing trouble. Freya grumbled. You're kidding me, right? Your old school put a stick up your ass. Bakugo said. Tatsuki, just take your feet off the desk. Freya said. Bakugo's eyes land on Freya and sighed. Our homeroom teacher will be here soon. You really want him mad. Bakugo pulled his feet off the desk. Let's start over. I'm Tenya Ida from the Sumi Private Academy. Ida said. Sumi, huh? So you must think you're better than me. I'm gonna have fun tearing you a new one. Bakugo growled, crossing his arms. Freya rubbed her temples. I give up. Freya thought as Ida gasps. You would threaten me. Your own classmate. Are you sure you're in the right place? Ida asked. Izuku and Freya share looks and have to hold back a laugh. Hi. Bakugo said looking away. Ida turned his head and saw Izuku and Freya standing in the doorway. Huh. It's him. Ida said. People turned to look at Freya and Izuku. Bow. Hi. Izuku said, nervously. Morning everyone. Freya said with a smile. Good morning. Ida said. He marched over to them. My name is Tenya Ida from. Yeah I know. I'm Izuku Midoriya. Super nice to meet you. Izuku said. Ida looked at Freya. I'm Freya Izawa. Nice to meet you. Freya said. Brett. Get over here. Your desk is next to mine. Bakugo called. Freya slipped past Ida as he talked to Izuku. A open desk was next to Bakugo. Freya slipped into the seat. Still can't believe the nerd is in our class. Get over it. He's in UA whether you like it or not. Freya said, hanging her backpack on the back of her chair. The girl Freya saw rescue Izuku came into the doorway and was talking of the exam. Freya had to hold back a laugh seeing Izuku blush. Ah, uh, someone has a crush. Freya thought. Bakugo was glaring at Izuku. If you're just here to make friends then you can pack up your stuff now. Freya looked towards the door and eyes widen. Aizawa was laying on the floor in his sleeping bag behind the girl. He did not crawl to his class. Freya thought as she shook her her head. Izuku looked at Freya's father in shock as the girl turned to look at Aizawa. Welcome to UAS Hero Course. Aizawa said, unzipping his sleeping bag and eating some applesauce. People gasp. Aizawa stands up and unzips the sleeping bag fully. It took eight seconds before you all shut up. That's not gonna work. Time is precious. Rational students would understand that. Hello, I'm Shota Aizawa. Your teacher. Freya felt some eyes on her with questioning looks. Freya shrunk in her seat. She has some explaining to do. Aizawa dug into his sleeping bag. Right, let's get to it. He pulled out a gym uniform. Put these on and head outside. Everyone got their gym uniforms and head for the locker room. The girl that saved Izuku came up to Freya as she got into her gym uniform. You must be a friend of Izuku. My name is Achako Yuraka. Yuraka said. Yes, I'm Freya Aizawa. Freya said. You have the same last name as our teacher. You two related. A girl that had a frog quirk said. He's actually my dad. Freya said. The girls looked shocked. Aren't you one that got in on recommendations? A girl with black hair pulled into a ponytail. Freya remembered her as one that got into recommendations as well. Freya remembered her name Momo Yeyurazu. Yes, Freya said. The girls introduced themselves. She met Jairo, who had earphones hanging from her ears made of her own skin. The frog girl that wanted to go by Tsuasui, Mina that was the pink-skinned girl. And Toru Hagakure, who was invisible. The girls started to talk and share their quirks. Freya, come on. You're the only one that hasn't shared your quirk. What is it? Mina, who had an acid quirk, asked. I got two actually. I got a quirk that can erase other quirks like my father and I got my mother's quirk that is a force quirk. Freya said. That's different. I think we have another one that has two quirks. One of the boys is half hot half cold quirk. Jairo said. Shoto Todoroki. Yeyarazu said. Freya nodded. Isn't he Endeavor's son? Sue asked. Yes. Freya said. We should get going so we don't keep the teacher waiting. Hagakure said. They headed outside where the boys were waiting. Freya stood with Mina and Yeyurazu. Aizawa explained what they were doing. What? A quirk assessment test. All the students asked. But orientation. We're gonna miss it. Yuraka said. If you really wanna make the big leagues, you can't waste time on pointless ceremonies. Aizawa said. Freya was the only one that didn't gasp. Here at UA, we're not tethered to traditions. That means that I get to run my class however I see fit. 
Students looked worried as Aizawa turned to look at his students. You've been taking standardized tests most of your lives. Aizawa holds up his phone. But you never got to use your quirks in physical exams before. The country's still trying to pretend we're all created equal by not letting those with the most power excel. It's not rational. One day, the Ministry of Education will learn. Aizawa turned towards Bakugo. Bakugo, you managed to get the most points on the entrance exam. What was your farthest distance throw with a softball when you were in junior high? 67 meters, I think. Bakugo said. Right. Try doing it with your quirk. Aizawa said. Bakugo stepped forward and took the ball from Aizawa. He went to stand in the circle. Anything goes, just stay in the circle. Go on. You're wasting our time. Bakugo stretches his arm. All right, man, you asked for it. Bakugo said. Bakugo stretches his arms out then with a huge blast of explosion he sends the ball flying. Die. The ball went high in the air. Show off. Freya mumbled. All of you need to know your maximum capabilities. Aizawa said. The ball hits the ground and the phone beeps. It's Tay's most rational way of figuring out your potential as a pro. He held up his phone. Everyone gasped. Bakugo got a 705.2 meters. Whoa, 705 meters, are you kidding me? A gold haired boy, Denki Kaminari asked. I wanna go. That looks like fun. Mina said. This is what I'm talking about, using our quirks as much as we want. A black haired boy named Hantasiro said. So this looks fun, huh? Aizawa said. Freya looked at her father. You have three years here to become a hero. You think it's all gonna be games and playtime. Aizawa smirked. Idiots. Today you'll compete in eight physical tests to gauge your potential. Whoever comes in last has none, and will be expelled immediately. Huh. Everyone yelled. Shit and knowing my luck, he won't take it easy on me for being his daughter. Thanks, dad. Freya thought. But she noticed she was eyeing Izuku, who looked scared. Like I said, I get to decide how this class runs. Aizawa said. He pushes his hair out of his face. Understand. The class gets serious faces. If that's a problem, you can head home right now. Bakugo gets into line with everyone else. You can't send one of us home. I mean, we just got here. Even if it wasn't the first day, that isn't fair. Yuraka said. Oh, and you think natural disasters are. We're power-hungry villains. HM. Or catastrophic accidents that wipe out whole cities. No, the world is full of unfairness. It's a hero's job to try to combat that unfairness. If you want to be a pro, you're gonna have to push yourself to the blink. For the next three years, Yue will throw one terrible hardship after another at you. So, go Bayon. Plus Ultra. He motions the next person forward. Show me it's no mistake that you're here. Ida pulls out a bottle and drinks. Freya smirked. I can do this. Freya thought. Now then. We're just wasting time by talking. Let the games begin. Aizawa said. The first test was the 50 meter dash. Others went ahead. Freya knew the running test wasn't gonna work with her quirks. She was paired with Izuku and Bakugo. They knelt on the ground. Aizawa was watching the three. Runner, on your marks. The measuring device said. They knelt up and a gunshot rings out. Burst speed. Bakugo yells as he uses explosions. Freya ran ahead of Izuku. Having been a jogger since she was a kid she was always quick. 4.13 seconds. The measuring device said. Freya followed shortly after. 6.03 seconds. Freya caught her breaths. 7.02 seconds. Freya smiled at Izuku. My power has more uses than anyone else's in this school. Bakugo said. Freya shot him a glare. His hands were still smoking, but Bakugo was looking at Izuku. She saw panic on his face. Freya hoped her father was joking with expelling students. She felt bad for her friend. All the tests were going well. Freya stood in the circle with the ball in her hand. Her hand glowed with the force as she pulled her arm back and she used the force to throw the ball. The ball spun fast as it flew through the air and landed in the ground. Freya turned to her father. He held up the cell phone. 550 meters. Freya smiled. Bakugo couldn't help but smirk. She came over and stood next to Bakugo. Yuraka was next. She took the ball and threw it. It disappeared up into the sky. Aizawa showed the phone. Affinity. Students said. Freya was impressed with Yuraka's quirk. It was a gravity quirk. She learned when they were talking waiting for their turn with the test. That's insane. How's that possible? Kaminari asked. TCH. Bakugo said. Freya nudged Bakugo in the ribs. He grunted in pain as Izuku stood in the circle. If Midoriya doesn't shape up soon, he's going home. Ida said. Bakugo turned on him. Huh. Of course he is. He's a quirkless loser. Bakugo said. Freya had to bite her tongue. He has a quirk. Ada said, looking at Bakugo. Did you not hear about what he did in the entrance exam? Huh. Freya. Bakugo said. Freya looked at him with a straight face. Just watch. Freya said. Bakugo gritted his teeth. Freya turned and watched Izuku. He stood staring off. He closed his eyes and gritted his teeth. He gets ready to throw. His arm glows red as he gets ready to throw. Aizawa activates his quirk as Izuku throws his arm. The ball didn't go far. Freya turned to look at her father and eyes widen as she sees her dad's eyes red and his capture scraft was dancing around Aizawa. 46 meters. The measuring device said. 
Izuku turned towards Aizawa. Having grown up with Freya, he knew about the teacher's powers. You should know by now my power after being friends with my daughter. Aizawa said. Izuku looked at Freya then back at Aizawa. I am not gonna have you destroy your body when you're still learning to control your quirk. Wait what's his quirk? Su said. He's the pro hero Arasser head. He can cancel out other people's quirks. He's one hero that likes to work on the down low. Freya said. Everyone started mumbling. He's also my dad. Some of the class's eyes widen. Were you trying to break every bone in your body? Aizawa said, causing Izuku to gasp. No that was not what I was trying to do. Izuku said. Aizawa sent part of his scarf towards Izuku and it wrapped around him. Aizawa pulled him towards him. Freya Wallen admitted but her father scared her at times. No matter what your intentions are, you would be nothing more than a liability in battle. Aizawa said. Freya put a hand to her face as Izuku gasped. You have the same reckless passion as another overzealous hero I know. One who saved 1,000 people by himself and became legend. But even with that drive, you're worthless if you can only throw a single punch before breaking down. Sorry, my Doria. With your power, there's no way you can become a hero. My daughter might have faith in you, but I don't know yet. Izuku looked up at Aizawa and got a determined look on his face. Freya stood with her arms crossed. Aizawa let Izuku go and the capture scarf came back to its place as Aizawa closed his eyes. Izuku looked down. I've returned your impractical quirk. Take your final throw. Hurry and get it over with. Aizawa walked away. He looked at Freya who was watching Izuku. Come on, my Doria. Show them you're not useless. You might not know your quirk yet, but I got faith that one day you will. Freya thought, not hearing her other classmates talking. You think the nerd can do it? Bakugo said. I don't know, but I think he can. Freya said as Aizawa put eye drops in his eyes. Izuku gritted his teeth and threw his arm back and brought his arm forward. Freya's eyes widen as one of his fingers glows red and he uses his quirk in one finger to send it flying. Yes, Freya jumped with happiness as it goes flying high in the air. Izuku's finger was broken. The others looked in shock. Bakugo's jaw nearly hit the ground. See. Aizawa looked at his phone. 705.3 meters. Mr. Aizawa. Aizawa looked at Izuku. Izuku was holding his arm as he looked at his teacher with a determined look on his face. You see, I'm still standing. Aizawa couldn't help but smile. Freya grinned. This kid. Aizawa said. He threw it over 700 meters. Kaminari said. Yuraka threw her arms up. Nice, he's finally showing us his true power. Yuraka called. Ada was shielding his eyes as he looks at Izuku. But his finger appears to be broken now. Just like in the exam. This quirk is very odd. Ada said. He's still learning his quirk. Freya said. It wasn't a very pretty throw. Ayama said. Freya looked at Bakugo. His eyes were wide and he was staring at Izuku in shock and dismay. This isn't gonna end well. Freya thought as Bakugo caused explosions with his hands. Hey. Bakugo yelled, running towards Izuku. Katsuki. Freya yelled. Deku, you bastard. Tell me how you did that, or you're dead. Bakugo yelled. Izuku screams. Before Freya could activate her quirk. Aizawa caught Bakugo in his capture scarf. Bakugo grunts as he turns to look at Aizawa whose hair was rose up and his red eyes were on Bakugo. What? Why the hell is your damn scarf so strong? Because it's a capture weapon made out of carbon fiber a special metal alloy. Stand down. It'd be wise to avoid making me use my quirk so much. It give me serious dry eyes. Aizawa said. Bakugo gritted his teeth. Aizawa released the capture scarf and closes his eyes. You're wasting my time now. Whoever's next can step up. Aizawa walked away. Bakugo glared at Izuku and went to stand next to Freya. Brett, you got some explaining to do of how you knew. Bakugo growled. Freya turned to Izuku as he came over. You all right, my Doria? Freya asked. I'm fine. My finger hurts. Izuku said. Bakugo clenched his fists as he glared at Izuku over Freya's head. The tests went. Freya and Bakugo teamed up to do sit-ups. Bakugo refused to talk to her. She could tell by his face that he was pissed and she didn't blame him as they finished up the tests. They stood and waited for the results. Freya stood in front of Bakugo. All right, time to give you your results. I've ranked you all from best to worst. You should probably have a good idea of your standing already. I'll just pull up the whole list. It's not worth going over each individual score. Aizawa said. He pushed a button on his phone and a projector popped up. Freya looked at her rank. 10th. Not bad. She only did bad with the dash. Izuku was last. Izuku looked down. Aizawa pushed another button and the projector went down. And I was lying, no one's going home. Everyone looked at him in shock and Freya raised an eyebrow at him. That was just a rational deception to make sure you gave it all in the tests. A bunch of people gasped. Nice going dad. You nearly scared my whole class. Freya grumbled. I'm surprised the rest of you didn't figure that out. I'm sorry. I guess I probably should have said something. Yeirazu said. Gyro, Kaminari, and Mineta glared at Yeirozo. That was pretty nerve-raking, huh? Siro said, looking at Kirishima. Nah, I'm always down for a challenge. Kirishima said. Did you know he was doing this? Yuraka asked, looking at Freya. He doesn't really tell me his plans for classes. Freya shrugged. That's it. We're done for the day. Pick up a syllabus in the classroom. Read it over before tomorrow morning. Aizawa said. 
Aizawa stopped to talk to Izuku as everyone headed to the locker rooms. Freya stepped outside to see Bakugo waiting for her. You could have went ahead, Freya said. Bakugo turned to look at Freya, glaring. You knew Izuku had a quirk. Why didn't you tell me? Bakugo said. I only found out during the entrance exam. Freya said, coming up to him. Bakugo growled. It wasn't my place to tell you. I figured Izuku would tell you, but guess you had to find out today. How the hell did he get it? Bakugo said. I don't know. I never asked. He'll tell us when he is ready. Freya said. Bakugo clicked his tongue and walked ahead. Freya ran after him. Don't take it out on me. It's not my right to tell you. I know, but I want to know the truth. One way or another I'm gonna beat that nerd. Bakugo said. Things would never change with Bakugo. Freya shook her head as they headed for their homes. Hero basic. Training. The next day, the class sat in English class. Present Mike was teaching the class. Bakugo was looking bored. Freya put her head down on the desk. Now, which of these four sentences contains a mistake? Present Mike. This is so boring. Feel like I'm back at my old school. Freya thought. Hey, everybody, look alive. Grandma rules. Present Mike said. Yeyurazu raises her hand. Yeyurazu, lay it on us. She gave the answer. Wake up, brat. Bakugo said, seeing Freya with her head on the desk. Just wake me up when it's time for lunch. Freya said. Bakugo shook his head. Lunchtime. Freya sat with Bakugo. Hiroshima and Kaminari joined them. Extras. Why are you sitting with us? Bakugo said. Hey, Freya. What's it like having our homeroom teacher as a dad? Hiroshima asked, ignoring Bakugo. Freya swallowed her food. Nothing really different. Freya said. How are you friends with this hothead? Kaminari asked. What did you say? Bakugo asked, jumping to his feet. Freya grabbed his shirt and yanked him down into the chair. We've known each other since we were kids. Us two and Midoriya grew up together. Freya said. Bakugo was glaring at the boys. Hiroshima and Kaminari noticed the two were close. So you're a couple? Hiroshima asked. No. Freya and Bakugo said both turning red. Freya looked down shielding her face with her long black hair. We're just good friends. Freya said. Hiroshima and Kaminari share some looks as Bakugo and Freya ate their food. Bakugo was glaring at the two boys, who sat there smirking. After lunch, they were back in their class. Everyone was eager to see what was on for the afternoon with hero basic training. Bakugo was tapping his desk impatiently. Will you stop that? Freya snapped as the sound got annoying. Bakugo smirked and got louder. Freya shoved him and he shoved her back, almost pushing her off the chair. Hiroshima and Kaminari watched with amusement. It was noticeable the two were close. I am here. Everyone turned and Freya and Bakugo stopped goofing off as their child-child hero came bursting through the door. Freya and Bakugo share smiles as Izuku gasped. Coming through the door like a hero. Students gasped. Freya heard he was teaching through her father. I can't believe it's really all might. Kaminari said. So he is a teacher. Hiroshima said with excitement. This year is gonna be totally awesome. It's almost a dream come true. Freya said. Bakugo grunted as All Might marches in. Hey, look. Is he wearing his Silver Age costume? Sue asked. All Might turns to look at his class. I'm getting goosebumps. It's so retro. Ajiro said. All Might stands in front of the desk. Welcome to the most important class at UA High. Think of it as Heroing 101. Here you will learn the basics of being a pro. And what it means to fight in the name of good. All Might said. He turns and stretches. Let's get into it. He turns and pulls out a card that read battle. Today's lesson will pull no punches. Bakugo grinned evilly. Fight training. Bakugo said. Real combat. Izuku asked. This should be fun. Freya said. But one of the keys of being a hero is. All Might said. He points at the wall. Looking good. Boxes came out of the wall all numbered. Freya's eyes widen. These were designed for you based on your quirk registration forms and the requests you sent in before school started. Cheers and gasps ring through the classroom. Freya turned towards Izuku. He was smiling. We get our costumes. Freya said. Izuku smiled at her and nodded. Get yourself suited up and meet me at training ground beta. All Might said. Yes sir. Everyone said. Everyone grabbed their number case and headed into the locker rooms. Freya smiled as she pulled her costume. It was like how she designed it. Her father wasn't too happy with the design. And, link to her outfit is in my profile. You're gonna make me go gray. Aizawa had said. Freya changed into it and made sure the capture scarf set well with the goggles around her neck. You got the same scarf as Mr. Aizawa. Sue said. I was trained with it since I was able to. Freya said. Do. Freya. I love your outfit. Your Raka said, coming over in her costume. Thank you. I like yours as well. Freya said. These costumes are awesome. We're finally doing it. Hagakure said. Freya smiled. She slipped her black gloves on. They head out and stepped out into the training area. All Might stood in front of them. They say that clothes make the pros, young ladies and gentlemen, and behold, you are the proof. Take this to heart. From now on you are all heroes in training. All Might said. His smile seemed to get bigger. Now shall we get started you bunch of newbies. Freya heard running and turned to see Izuku in his rabbit-like costume. Freya chuckled as Yuraka approached him. Freya looked for Bekugo and was not surprised with his costume. He had shown her his designs before he had submitted them. Bakugo's eyes looked for Freya and his eyes widened at her outfit. He was surprised her father let her keep it. 
Bak Hugo couldn't help but admit and looked good on her. Bak Hugo shook his head. Where the hell did that come from? I need to focus. Bak Hugo thought. Katsuki. Bak Hugo looked at Freya as she came up to him. I like your hero costume. Thanks brat. I'm surprised your father approved of yours. Bak Hugo said. He said I was pushing it, but he let me. Freya said. Freya. Kirishima said, throwing his arm around Freya. Killer costume. Makes you look good. Bak Hugo growled at Kirishima. Leave her be, shitty hair. Bak Hugo growled. Kirishima just smirked. Thanks Kirishima. Freya said. Now that you're ready, it's time for combat training. Ada raised his arm. Sir, this is the fake city from the entrance exam. Does that mean we'll be conducting urban battles again? Ada asked. Not quite. I'm going to move you two steps ahead. Most of the villain fights you see on the news take place outside. However, statistically speaking, run-ins with the most dastardly evildoers take place indoors. Think about it. Backroom deals, home invasions, secret underground lairs. Truly intelligent criminals stay hidden in the shadows. For this training exercise, you'll be split into teams of good guys and bad guys and fight two-on-two -two indoor battles. All Might said. Isn't this a little advanced? Sue asked. The best training is what you get on the battlefield. But remember, you can't just punch a robot this time. You're dealing with actual people now. All Might said. Sir, will you be the one deciding who wins? Yeyarazu asked. How much can we hurt the other team? Bak Hugo asked. Do we need to worry about the losers getting expelled like earlier? Yuraka asked. Will you be splitting us up based on chance or comparative skill? Ida said. Is this cape Traz chic? Ayama asked, as he showed off his cape. All Might growls as sweat drops from his face. I wasn't finished talking. All Might said. Freya facebombed. All Might pulled out a book, making some of his students raise an eyebrow. Listen up. The situation is this. The villains have hidden a nuclear missile somewhere in their hideout. The heroes must try to foil their plans. To do that, the good guys either have to catch the evadoers or recover the weapon. Likewise, the bad guys succeed if they protect their payload or capture the heroes. Sounds easy enough. Freya thought. All Might held up a box that had lots labeled on it. Time's limited, and we'll choose teams by drawing lots. All Might said. Isn't there a better way? Ada said. Think about it. Pros often have to team up with heroes from other agencies on the spot. So maybe that's the reason we're seeing that here. Freya said. Izuku nodded. She's right. Izuku said. Yes, I see. Life is a random series of events. Ada said. He bowed. Excuse my rudeness. Is he for real? Bak Hugo grumbled. No sweat. Let's draw. All Might said. Izuku was on a team with Yuraka. Bak Hugo was with Ada. Bak Hugo did not seem happy about it. Freya was on a team with Shoto Todoroki. You're our homeroom teacher's daughter. Freya turned to the boy with two different hair colors and had ice going up his one side, making his one eye glow red. Yes, you're Todoroki then. Freya said. Todoroki nodded. The two started talking about their powers as Bak Hugo watched the two. I get four eyes while she is stuck with the icy hot guy. Bak Hugo thought. They always trained together as kids and as they got older. They knew each other's quirk and weaknesses. Freya wouldn't have discovered more of her force quirk if Bak Hugo didn't help along with her father. Her mom died shortly after she discovered her quirks. I declare that the first teams to fight will be. All Might pulls two balls, one from the villain box and one from the hero box. These guys. Team D, which was Ida and Bak Hugo, VRS. Team A, which was Izuku and Yuraka. Freya had to bite her lip. Team A will be the heroes, Team D will be the villains. Everyone else can head to the monitoring room to watch. Yes, sir. Students say. Bak Hugo was glaring at Izuku. Play nice. Freya elbowed Bak Hugo. I don't know what you're talking about, brat. Bak Hugo growled. Freya ignored him as she walked up to Izuku and put a hand on his shoulder. Good luck, Midoriya. Freya said. Thanks Freya. Izuku said. Freya headed into the monitor room with the others. So Freya, how did you end up friends with that hothead? Ciro asked, coming over. He's not always a hothead with me. He just is with others. Freya said. All Might came into the monitor room and went up to the screens. Izuku and Yuraka were still outside and Bakugo and Ida were in the room with the nuclear missile. Who you cheering for Freya? Kamenaria asked. I don't know. Kind of hard when both my friends are on the other teams. Freya said. All Might grabbed the microphone. All right. Let's begin the indoor combat training. Team A and Team D, your time starts now. All Might said. All Might looks at the others. Pay attention kids. Think about what you would do. Freya watched as Izuku and Yuraka climbed through the window and entered the building. They walked around corners, trying to find where they held the Miss Lee. Freya's eyes widen as Bakugo came out from hiding. Izuku tackles Yuraka out of the way as Bakugo hits the wall, causing an explosion. Izuku and Yuraka sat up and Freya saw that part of Izuku's mask was broken. The monitor room had no sound so you couldn't hear what was being said. Bakugo pushes the smoke away from him and stares down Izuku. He almost got the jump on them. Mina said. Sneak attack, Bakugo. What kind of man pulls cheap crap like that? Kirishima asked. Freya rolled her eyes. It's a viable strategy. He's playing the part. Acting like a true villain would. All Might said. It didn't work. Midoriya dodged him. Mina said. I think Bakugo is enjoying this a little bit too much. Freya said. Look there he goes. Kaminari said. 
Bakugo was charging at Izuku and Yuraka with a crazed look on his face. Izuku grabs his arm. Izuku turns and flips Bakugo over his shoulder and Bakugo lands on his back. Not bad, Freya said. What do you mean? Sue said. Midoriya likes to analyze other heroes' moves, weaknesses, and powers. He's seen me and Bakugo train and fight each other. So he knows both of ours. So he knows Bakugo's moves. He used it to his advantage. Freya explained. Izuku stood up straight as Bakugo sat up. There was a determined look on Izuku's face. He has grown so much since we were kids. Freya thought as Bakugo stood up and turned on Izuku, explosions forming in his hands. It was obvious that Izuku was shaking in terror. Hey, who's Bakugo talking to? I'm not hearing anything. Can we get any sound with this video? Kirishima said. He's got a radio in his ear so he can talk to his partner. All Might said. Ida looked like he was trying to talk to Bakugo and was getting frustrated with his partner. I gave it to him before the match started. Along with a map of the building. Also, this. He holds up a roll of some kind of tape. A roll of capture tape. Wrapping this around your opponent means you've apprehended them, and they're out for the rest of the game. So, there's a 15 limit, and the good guys have no idea what floor the nuclear weapon is hidden on, right? Mina asked. Correct. All Might said. Then the heroes are clearly at a disadvantage here. A big one, Mina said. Real pros have to outwit villains on a daily basis. That's life. Even when the odds aren't in our favor, we fight. All Might said. Students gasped. All together. All Might throws his fist into the air. All the students raise their fists in the air. Let's hear a plus ultra. Everyone said. Monsieur. He's on the move. Aoyomi said. Freya's eyes went back to the screen. Bakugo blasts towards Izuku with one hand. Yuraka took off running. Bakugo kicks Izuku. Izuku was a step ahead of him and wraps tape around Bakugo's leg. Bakugo uses his hand to try and hit Izuku. But Izuku moves and Bakugo hits the wall. The little guy's pretty good. Sato said. He's holding his own and hasn't even used his quirk yet. Siro said. Bakugo gets ready to go blasting at Izuku. But Izuku takes off running. Bakugo goes running after him, but comes around a corner and loses sight of him. Freya saw the rage on Bakugo's face. He was saying something and Freya knew he was pissed as explosions came out of his hands as Izuku was running one way, and Yuraka was off to find the room that held the nuclear weapon. That guy has some real anger issues. Kinda scary. Kaminari said. Freya snorted. How did you put up with him, Freya? I'm still wondering about that. Freya said, watching the screen. Bakugo blasts a door off the wall as he looks for Izuku and keeps searching, blasting any door that gets in his way. Izuku leaned against a wall, panting. Yuraka seemed to be getting close to where the nuclear weapon was. Even with the training him and I did growing up, he was never this aggressive with me. But he never did like when Midoriya was hanging with us. He always said he'd rather have me hanging with him. Freya thought. Looks like Yuraka found the nuclear weapon. Hagakure said. She was right. Yuraka was looking into the room where Ida was. Ida seemed to be mumbling to himself and Yuraka seems to laugh that catches Ida's attention. And she comes out of hiding. Freya's eyes go back to Izuku to see Bakugo nearing their friend's hiding spot. The teams had six minutes left to complete this. Izuku stood up with the capture tape and Bakugo comes around the corner with a smirk on his face. Is it me or does he have a crazed look on his face? Siro asked. Freya rubbed her temples. Siro was right. Bakugo did have that look. Bakugo holds out his arm and seems to grab a trigger. Young Bakugo don't. You'll kill him. All Might said. Freya's eyes widen as a huge fireball rages through the hall, destroying everything and the whole building shakes. Whoa. This is nuts. Karisha said. Damn, Bakugo. Freya said. Come in. Come in, Midoriya. All Might said through the microphone. Deku's mask was fully destroyed but he didn't look hurt. Bakugo came out of the smoke. Freya put two and two together with Bakugo's gauntlets. The more sweat he stores in them, the stronger the explosion. Nice idea, Katsuki. Freya thought. Freya saw movement on another screen. Yuraka was running towards Ida. Ida runs at her. Yuraka uses her quirk to make herself float up into the air above Ida. She was close to touching the weapon when Ida used his engine to run towards the nuclear weapon and grabs it, moving it out of her way before she could grab it. Yuraka hits the ground. She was so close. Freya said. But Ida was faster. Kirishima said. Kirishima turns to All Might. Sir, isn't this getting out of hand? That Bakugo is acting really crazy. He's gonna kill him. Not so. All Might said. He won't kill him. Maybe hurt him, but not kill. Freya said. Back Hugo. Use that stored up power again and I'll stop this fight. All Might said in the microphone. Your team will lose. Back Hugo didn't look happy at All Might's words. To employ such a strong attack indoors is inviting the destruction of the stronghold you should be protecting. That's a poor strategy, whether you're a hero or a villain. The penalty would be a massive loss of points. Bakugo seems to let out a yell and blast towards Izuku. Izuku tries to punch him and Bakugo flies over him and sends a blast at Izuku in the back. Everyone gasps. Freya shook her head. What was that move? Kirishima asked. He doesn't come off as a guy with a strategy. But he's actually quite intelligent. Todoroki said. Huh. Mina asked. What are you talking about? Kirishima asked. He changed his trajectory while in midair using a blast that doubled as a smokescreen. 
Very clever, Todoroki said. A feint attack like that requires an extreme amount of precision. He had to calculate the physics and demonstrate control over his quirk. Ayurazu said. Og, Bakugo is uber talented. I hate it. Kaminari said. Freya flinches as Bakugo punches Izuku in the arm with his arm. Bakugo grabs his arm and uses explosions to spin the two around, then slams him into the ground. It's hard to watch. All he has to do is wrap tape around him, not kill him. Mina said. Bakugo certainly acting like a villain. Takoyami said. I thought Midoriya was pretty amazing at the start of the fight, but he's completely outmatched in terms of combat power. Not to mention, Bakugo seems like a natural at all this stuff. Kaminari said. Come on Midoriya, show them what you can do. Freya thought as Izuku stood up and started to move. He's running away. Mina said. Not very manly, but he doesn't have a choice. He's outgunned. Unless he's got some kind of plan. It's possible. Kirishima said. Izuku ran for the window. He turned to face Bakugo as he approached him. The two charge each other. Izuku's arm glowed as he threw it back as Bakugo's hand glowed. They're gonna kill each other. Sir, both of you stop. All Might yells, but Izuku shouted something. Yuraka grabs one of the pillars. I think there was a plan, Freya said. Freya's eyes widen as Izuku aims his punch up to the ceiling. He destroys all the ceilings with a gust of wind. Well shit. Yuraka uses her quirk to be able to pick up a pillar and uses it to send debris flying at Ada. She runs and floats up to the nuclear weapon and grabs it. Freya couldn't help but smile. Tima had won. Everyone stood in shock while Freya stood smirking. All Might seemed impressed. The hero team wins. All Might said. Izuku collapses to the ground with his arms injured as Bakugo stood in shock. What a weird way for this to end. The losers are practically untouched and the winners are both on the ground. Kaminari said. How does the old saying go? They may have lost the battle, but they won the war. Takoyami said. This class is intense. Sue said. All Might went to make sure that Izuku was taken by medical bots to the nurse's office. He brought Bakugo back to the monitor room. Bakugo walked up to Freya and stood next to her. You fought good. Freya said, nudging him. TCH. The damn nerd still beat me. Bakugo grumbled. All Might stood in front of everyone. Well, despite the results. The MVP of this exercise is young Ada. All Might said. Students gasp. Huh. Ada asked. Shouldn't it be one of the heroes instead, since they're the winners? Sue asked. MM. Valid question. Why didn't I choose one of those two? Who has a guess? All Might asked, raising his hand. Yeyarazu raised her hand. Sir, I can tell you why. Ada embraced this challenge. He was the only one who truly adapted to his assigned role. I'll explain. Bakugo's judgment was clouded by a personal grudge against Midoriya. As you pointed out earlier, launching a large-scale attack indoors was a foolish move. It could have been disastrous. Similarly, Midoriya's plan was also poorly thought out, considering the amount of damage that he received. He rendered himself helpless. Not smart. As for Yuraka, she let her guard down mid-battle, and her final attack was far too reckless given the hypothetical stakes. If she treated the fake weapon as though it were real, she never would have risked using such an imprecise move. Ada was fully prepared for his opponent's arrival. He had a strategy and never lost sight of his mission to protect the dummy weapon, even if he was foiled in the end. Yeyarazu said. Ada looked like he was going to faint at what Yeyarazu was saying. Technically, the hero team won, yes, but they took advantage of the fact that this was training. They didn't respect the spirit of the trial. Yes, well, you overlooked a few things. Young Ada could have relaxed a little bit in the exercise, but otherwise, you nailed it. All Might said, giving Yeyurazu the thumbs up. One should always start with the basics and devote themselves wholeheartedly to learning. That's the only real way to become a top hero. Yeyurazu said. She's gonna be the smart one of the class. Freya thought. Now then, time to blow this joint. Let's move on to the next match. Think about everything we saw and discussed as you tackle this training for yourself. All Might said. Yes, sir. Students said. Freya put a hand on Bakugo's shoulder and he jumps. You all right? Freya whispered. Just leave me alone. Bakugo said, pulling himself free from her. Freya sighed and turned her back to him. Todoroki and Freya was pulled as the heroes and Oijiro and Hagakir was the villains. Match 2. Team B will be our heroes. And Team I will be the villains. Look alive kids. Show us you're the embodiment of good. Or evil. Let's go. All Might called. Freya pulled her goggles onto her face as her and Todoroki stepped into the building. They are probably in the middle of the building. Freya said. I think for your own safety, go outside. Todoroki said. Freya raised an eyebrow. What are you going to do? Freya asked. I'm going to freeze the building. I don't want you to get caught up in the freeze. Todoroki said as his hand formed ice. He touched the wall and ice started forming across the building. Freya's hand glowed and she created a force step and quickly jumps onto it so her shoes didn't freeze to the ground. Force step are like steps but she can create multiple ones to jump to in the air so she was almost walking in air. Freya felt cold. Todoroki looked back and eyes widened when he saw Freya was still in there but not frozen to the ground and standing on an invisile, like step with her hands glowing. 
I do have some tricks up my sleeve as well. Freya said as she stepped down. Todoroki was impressed. Let's go get the weapon. Todoroki and Freya found the others. They could only find Hagakir by her barefoot prints and step into the room where Ajiro was guarding the missile. He got into a fighting stance. Pry yourself up if you want, but it might be hard to fight me with no skin on your bottom of your feet. Todoroki said as he stood in front of Ajiro. Freya walked towards the missile and touched it. The hero team wins. All make cause. Todoroki touches the wall and the ice shimmers and starts to disappear. Hate, too. Ajiro said. It's not your fault. We're just playing on different levels. Todoroki said. His quirk is amazing. He can use ice on one side and fire on the other. He was in on recommendations like I was. Freya thought. The review was different than Tima and D. Winner was still the heroes, but soon after everyone was breezing through the training with ease. Soon it was the end of the day. Bakugo was gone before Freya got out of the locker room. Freya sighed. She knew he was pissed at Izuku and wanted to be left alone. She didn't like that he was taking it out on her. Hey Freya. A voice called. Freya turned to see Gyro and Mina standing behind her. Wanna go get some dinner? Sure. Freya said. The girls head down the street. Freya had a feeling she would make friends here and she hoped so. Class representative. Freya was surprised to see Bakugo waiting for her outside when she left for school the next day. She thought he was still mad at her. She didn't get home Yuta late last night cause Gyro and Mina sat talking as they did their homework and got to know each other more. You're not mad at me anymore. Freya asked as they started walking. I can't stay mad at you long. It wasn't your fault that I lost. Bakugo said. Just don't take it out on me. Freya said. They walked to the school to see reporters at the entrance. What's going on? I don't know. Bakugo said as they got closer. Here's some students. You. What can tell us what's it like being taught by All Might? The reporter said. I. Bakugo grabbed Freya's hand before she could say anything and pulls her away. Don't need to be talking to these idiots. Bakugo growled. Hey wait. Aren't you that sludge villain kid? The reporter said. Walk away. Bakugo growled as he pulled Freya through the gate. Aizawa was heading for the gate. No wonder why your old man hates them. He didn't let go of Freya's hand as they stepped through the doors. They walked towards their classroom. Both didn't seem to want to let go of the hand. They enter the classroom. Freya. Freya turned her head to see Izuku approach. Were you two bombarded by the reporters? We were. They sure are pushy. Freya said. Oh, isn't that cute? They're holding hands. Kaminari said. Bakugo quickly let go of Freya's hand with a growl. Bakugo goes and sits in his desk. Freya went to talk to Gyro and Mina for a bit until Aizawa stepped in and she got in her seat. Bakugo was glaring at the board. Decent work on yesterday's combat training, you guys. I saw the video feeds and went over each of your team's results. Aizawa said. So that's why he came home late last night. Freya thought. Bakugo. You're talented. So don't sulk like a child about your loss, okay? Aizawa said. Bakugo sighed and looked out the window. Yeah, whatever. Bakugo grumbled. Freya elbowed him gently. It's a compliment and he's right. Freya whispered. TCH. Bakugo said. And Midoriya. Aizawa said. Izuku gulped. Freya gave him a small smile. I see the only way you won the match was messing up your arm again. Izuku lowered his head. Work harder. And don't give me the excuse that you don't have control over your quirk. That line's already getting old. You can't keep breaking your body while training here. But your quirk will be really useful if you can get a handle on it. Izuku gasps with a smile on his face. So, show a little urgency, huh? Right. Izuku said. Freya smiled and looked back towards her father. Let's get down to business. Our first task will decide your future. Aizawa said. Everyone got nervous thinking it was another quirk test. You all need to pick a class representative. All hell seemed to break out after his announcement. Pick me, guys. I want to be class rep. Kirishima said. I'll take it. Kirishima said, raising his hand. Yeah, you're gonna need me. Jairo said with her hand up. Someone with style would be best. Aoyomi said, with his hand. Mina shot to her feet. I'm like totally the right pick. Mina said. Everyone was shouting except Freya and Izuku. You don't want it, Freya. Jairo asked. Her seat was right next to Freya's. Not really something I would be interested in. Freya said. Ada shot to his feet. Silence everyone, please. Ada said. He got the class to shut up. The class representative's duty is to lead others. That's not something just anyone can do. You must have the trust of every student in the classroom. That leaves you out, Bakugo. Freya said in a whisper. Shut up, Brett. Bakugo growled. Therefore, the most logical way to fill this position is democratically. We will hold an election to choose our leader. Ada said. I think he wants us to vote for him. I'm not sure on that. Freya thought. Is this really the best idea? Kaminari asked. We've only known each other a few days. How do we know who we can trust? Sue asked. Besides, everyone will just vote for themselves. Freya said. Most people will. But that means whoever does receive multiple votes must truly be the most suitable person for the job. Ada said. He turned to Aizawa and Freya put her head on her desk. He was getting into his sleeping bag already. It's the best way, right, sir. Do what you want, just decide before my nap's over. Aizawa said. He fell over and landed on the floor. Is that normal of him? Mina asked. Yes. He doesn't sleep well, and I usually have to wake him before class starts. Freya grumbled. Thank you for your trust. Ada said. 
They moved the desks around and sat all in a circle around the chalkboard. Students started to write who they wanted. Freya didn't write her name down and had to hide her vote from Bakugo, who kept trying to see if she voted for him. She wrote down Ada's name. He seemed more of a leader than any of the others. Freya soon found herself writing the names on the board and doing marks for the names as Ida read them out. She had no votes which was fine. Freya's eyes widened when she realized that Izuku had three votes and Yeyurazu had two. How did I get three votes? Izuku said. Freya sat down in her desk. Bakugo jumped to his feet. Okay, you idiots, who voted for him? Bakugo yelled. What, did you honestly think anyone would vote for you? Siro said. What did you just say? Bakugo yelled. Freya grabbed his arm and pulled him down in his seat. Sit down and shut up. Freya growled. Bakugo closed his mouth as she glared at him. Dude, she has you whipped. Kirishima said. Shut up or I'll kill you. Bakugo growled. Freya rolled her eyes at Bakugo. Ida was sitting in his seat shaking. So, you voted for someone else. Yeoyarazu said. But you knew it was best to vote for yourself, right? What were you trying to prove here, Ida? Sato said. Freya sighed. They moved their desks back and sat down. Izuku stood at the front of the class, shaking with Yeyurazu. Freya felt bad for him. Bakugo sat with his arms crossed, looking pissed. All right, the class rep is Midoriya, and our deputy is Yeyurazu. Aizawa said. He was still in his sleeping bag. Really? Uh, it's not a mistake. Izuku said. Yeyurazu sighs. How'd this happen? Yeyurazu asked. This might not be so bad. Su said. Yeah, I can get behind Midoriya I guess. Hiroshima said. Yeyurazu was totally on top of it when it came to our training results. Kaminari said. Bakugo growled. You really thought you had a chance. Freya said as they walked to the lunchroom. I don't know. Just please say you didn't vote for the nerd. Bakugo grumbled. No, Freya said. Bakugo sighed. He doesn't seem to want it. TCH. Damn nerd was shaking in his boots. Bakugo said as they stood in line for the food. Freya chuckled. She knew he was right. They got their food and went to sit at a table. Mina and Gyro joined them, and the girls started talking. Kirishima and Kaminari joined them. Bakugo ignored them but wasn't surprised that Freya was making friends with others in the class. You think Midoriya will be a good class rep? Mina asked. He looked scared. Gyro said. Ada didn't seem happy he wasn't elected. Freya said. TCH. The four eyes clearly wanted it. Bakugo said. He actually talks civil with food. Hiroshima said. Bakugo shot him a glare. And why are you here, shitty hair, sparky? Bakugo growled. The girls share looks and start to eat their food as the boys argue. A bell suddenly rings. Warning. Level 3 security breach. Announcer said. What? Freya said. All students please evacuate the building in an orderly fashion. Announcer said. What is level 3 security breach? Kaminari said. It means someone breached the school barriers. Freya said, standing up as the others stand. They quickly head out. Students were shoving each other trying to get out. Freya almost got knocked off her feet. Damn it. Everyone needs to stop shoving. Gyro said as she was shoved into Freya, knocking her to the ground. Arms wrap around her and pull her up. She gets pushed into the wall. Freya looked up to see Bakugo standing in front of her. With your height, you'll be trampled, shorty. Bakugo said. Thank you. Freya said. Bakugo was looking at her. He didn't realize how pretty her eyes were up close. He felt a shove to his back. He put both hands on either side of her from stopping from falling on her. His body was almost pressed against hers and their faces were inches from each other. People need to stop shoving. Damn extras. They panic and this is what. Watch it. Hiroshima said accidentally bumping into Bakugo. Bakugo's lips collided with Freya's making her eyes widen. Man. Sorry man. Who? Am I interrupting a moment? Bakugo pulled away from Freya. Both were red in the face. Freya pressed her face into Bakugo's shoulder to hide her embarrassment. Shitty hair. Watch who you run into. Bakugo said, red in the face. Well, aren't you just two peas in the pod? Kirishima said with a smirk. Just shut up Kirishima. Freya said looking at him red in the face. We really need them to calm down. Freya is gonna get trampled at this rate. Kaminari said as he shoved into Freya and Bakugo. Bakugo pulled her into a hug, making sure she wasn't knocked to the ground. I'm fine. Freya grumbled. Freya looked towards the windows and eyes widened. That's who came onto school grounds. The press. Bakugo turned his head and saw she was right. The press was standing at the doors and Aizawa and present Mike were standing in front of them. How the hell did they get through the gate? Bakugo said. I thought UA had the best defense system. Kaminari said. They do. Something doesn't add up. Freya said. Bakugo growled as more of the students push into them. No one should be panicking like this. It's not that bad. Engine boost, go. Ada yelled. Freya saw Ada floating above the students. His engine activated ad started spinning to get to the exit sign. What the hell is Four Eyes doing? Bakugo said. He hits the wall. He was standing on the exit sign and held the pole that was above his head. Listen up, everything is okay. Ada yelled. Students stopped shoving. Freya sighed in relief as Bakugo let her go but kept a hand on her arm. It's just the media outside. There's absolutely nothing to worry about. Everything's fine. We're UA students. We need to remain calm and prove that we're the best of the best. Freya sighed as sirens came. Look the police are here. Thank goodness. Bakugo walks away and Freya followed. 
Are we going to talk of the kiss? Freya said. It was nothing. If shitty hair didn't bump into me, it wouldn't have happened. Bakugo said. Freya felt her heart sink. Yeah. I, Freya started. Bakugo turned to look at her. She was looking down with a hand on her arm. I guess you're right. Freya disappeared another way. Bakugo growled in frustration. He always was protective of her after her mom died and she was bullied by others. He felt like they were friends but deep down he felt something building deep down for her. Back in the classroom. Yeirazu and Izuku were in front of the class. Freya refused to look at Bakugo as they sat next to each other. It's time, class rep. Let's begin. Yeirazu said. Bum. Okay, so we need to figure out who the other class officers will be. But first, there's something that I want to say. Izuku said. Huh. Yeirazu asked. Freya raised an eyebrow at his words. I've thought a lot about this. And I think that Tenya Ida should be our class rep. Izuku said. Ida gasps. He was able to capture everyone's attention and get us in line. So, I believe that he should be the one leading our class from now on. Yeah, you know what? If Midoriya vouches for him, I'm good. Plus, he was a big help. He totally manned up and took charge, right? Hiroshima asked. Yup. Oh. Did you notice he looked like the dude on the emergency exit signs when he was on the wall earlier? Kaminari said. This is a waste of time. Aizawa said. He was back in his sleeping bag, sitting on the floor. I don't care who the rep is, just hurry up. Aizawa lays back down. Ida stands up. If Midoriya is nominating me for this job then I humbly accept. I pledge to carry out the duties of class rep to the best of my abilities. Ida said. Sounds good, emergency exit. Kirishima said. Emergency exit Ida. Don't let us down, man. Kaminari said. TCH. Of course, the nerd gives it to four eyes. Bakugo growled. He has a leadership about him. Freya said. Bakugo looked outside. Hello, I got two more votes than him. Yorazu complained. Ada started talking. Freya looked at Bakugo, but he didn't look at her. Are we only meant to be friends and nothing more? Or is there maybe a chance? Freya thought as she looked back towards the class rep. Later that day, everyone was excited for some hero training. Even Bakugo seemed to be excited for it. Today's training will be a little different. You'll have three instructors. Me, All Might, and another faculty member will be keeping tabs on you. Aizawa said. Students gasp. Siro's hand shot up. Sir, what kind of training is this? Siro asked. Aizawa held up a rescue card. Rescue, Aizawa said. Freya jumped in her seat with excitement. You'll be dealing with natural disasters, shipwrecks, stuff like that. Disasters, huh? Sounds like we're in for a big workout. Kaminari said. Totally, Mina said. Actual hero work. Freya said, looking at Izuku, who nodded with a smile on his face. Finally, I'll get to show off how good I am in water. Ribbit, Sue said. Freya smiled at her friend. Guys, I'm not finished yet. Aizawa said. Students quickly went quiet. Freya almost shrunk in her seat. What you wear in this exercise is up to you. I know you're excited about costumes. He pushes a button, and their briefcases came out with their numbers on it. But keep in mind that you haven't gotten used to them yet, and they might limit your abilities. This special training's at an off-campus facility, so we'll be taking a bus to get there. He walks away. That's all. Start getting ready. Everyone stood up to grab their briefcases. They all stood outside waiting for the bus. Freya stood with Mina and Gyro talking. Izuku was in his gym costume after it got destroyed during the last training session. Bakugo was avoiding Freya at the moment, but Freya didn't care at the moment. You excited for the training? Mina asked. Rescue training is one I've been looking forward to. I would like to do rescue missions when I become a pro. I work well with kids, Freya said. And with your father's quirk you'll be good at stopping villains. You don't want to be on the low key like your father. Gyro asked. No, and I'm not aiming to be a top hero like Bakugo and Midoriya, Freya said. Bakugo was watching Freya. He looked away as a whistle blew. Ida stood in front of the bus. Gather around, class 1A. Using your student numbers, form two neat lines, so we can load the bus efficiently. Ida said. Freya sighed. He's taking this class rep position into high gear. Gyro said. He sure is. Freya grumbled. They get on the bus and Freya was next to Bakugo. He didn't say anything to her as the bus got moving. You going to talk to me? Freya said. Bakugo looked at her. Just don't like the silent treatment. Sorry for earlier. Bakugo said. Wasn't your fault. People were shoving and stuff. Freya said. Freya leaned her head back as she could hear people talking about other quirks. You excited for this training? I'd rather be fighting villains than doing rescue. But it's part of being a pro. Bakugo said. She smiled. Well, if any of our classmates have pro quirks, it's Todoroki and Bakugo. Kirishima said. Bakugo looked towards Kirishima and then looked out the window. Sure, but Bakugo's always angry, so he'll never be that popular. Sue said. Freya had to bite her lip from laughing. Bakugo jumped to his feet. What did you say? I'll kick your ass. Bakugo growled. Freya grabbed his arm and pulled him back down before he jumped over the seat and tackled Sue. 
You know, we basically just met you. So, it's kind of telling that we all know your personality is flaming crap mixed with garbage. Kaminari said. Freya moved out of the way as Bakugo shot up again and glared at Kaminari. You're gonna regret the day you apply to this school, you loser. Bakugo said. Sit down before my dad wraps you up in his capture scarf. Freya said, grabbing Bakugo and pulling him into his seat again. Bakugo sat with his arms crossed. Seems like the only one that can calm his anger is Freya. Sue said. Bakugo glared at Sue. Just because he knows she won't put up with it. Izuku said. You better shut it you damn nerd. Bakugo said. Freya sighed. Hey, hey, we're here. Stop messing around. Aizawa said, glaring at his student. Yes sir. The students said. Whatever. Bakugo said. They step into the USJ. Freya saw the pro hero. Thirteen waiting for them as they got off the bus. Freya stood in between Kirishima and Bakugo as they stood in front of her. Hello, everyone, I've been waiting for you. Thirteen said. Students gasp. Izuku started to be a fanboy at the moment. It's the space hero, Thirteen. The chivalrous pro who's rescued a ton of people from disasters across the world. Izuku said. Yuraka was excited. Woohoo. Thirteen is one of my favorite heroes. Yuraka said with excitement in her voice. I can't wait to show you what's inside. Thirteen said, motioning for the door. This is going to be awesome. Students said. They step into the dome building and Freya smiled at the sight. She heard about this place from her father and Uncle Mike. Holy crap. It looks like some kind of amusement park. Kirishima said. A shipwreck. A landslide. A fire. A windstorm. Etc. I created this training facility to prepare you to deal with different types of disasters. I call it the Unforeseen Simulation Joint. But you can call it, USJ. 13 said. This place is neat. Freya thought as her father approached 13. Hey, shouldn't All Might be here already? Let me guess, he booked an interview instead. Aizawa said. Freya saw All Might wasn't here as 13 talks to Aizawa. That man is the height of irresponsibility. Aizawa said. Freya wondered if All Might was alright. The clock's ticking. We should get started. He walks off to the side. Excellent. Before we begin, let me just say one thing. Well, maybe two things. Possibly three, four, or five. Thirteen said. We get it. Everyone thought. Listen carefully. I'm sure you're aware that I have a powerful quirk. It's called Black Hole. I can use it to suck up anything and turn it into dust. Thirteen said. Yuraka sat there nodding. Yeah, you've used Black Hole to save people from all kinds of disasters before, haven't you? Izuku said. That's true, but my quirk could also very easily be used to kill. Thirteen said. Yuraka, Izuku, Anita gasped. Some of you also have powers that can be dangerous. In our superhuman society, all quirks are certified and stringently regulated, so we often overlook how unsafe they can actually be. Please don't forget that if you lose focus or make the wrong move, your powers can be deadly, even if you're trying to do something virtuous like rescue someone. Thanks to Aizawa's fitness tests, you have a solid idea of your quirk's potential. And because of All Might's combat training, you likely experienced how dangerous your powers can be when used against other people. Carry those lessons over to this class. Today, you're going to learn how to use your quirks to save people's lives. You won't be using your powers to attack enemies or each other, only to help. After all, that's what being a hero is all about. Ensuring the safety of others. 13 takes a bow. That's all I have to say. Thank you so much for listening. Students cheer. Bakugo just stood there, not looking thrilled. Right. Now that that's over. Aizawa started. Electricity ran through the side of the building, making students gasp. The water fountain stopped and restarted. A purple-like warp started forming in front of the fountain. Dad. Freya said. Aizawa turned and looked towards the fountain. Freya knew something was wrong when her father's eyes widen as the warp starts to get bigger. A hand comes out of the warp and a face appears. The face had a hand on it. Stay together and don't move. Aizawa said. Students gasp and Freya gritted her teeth. 13. Protect the students. Whoa, what is that thing? Hiroshima said, as the man came out. He had hands all over his body. More people came out of the warp. Wait, has the training started already? I thought we were rescuing people. I don't think so. Freya said as more came out. Izuku and Freya stepped forward. Stay back. Freya looked at Aizawa and saw him put his yellow goggles on. Father, what's going on? Freya said. This is real. Those are villains. Students gasp. Freya's eyes widen as a bird-like creature with its brain sticking out of its head stepped out and the man with the hand stopped it. What the hell is that thing? Freya thought. The warp formed a face. The only real heroes I see are 13 and Eraserhead. Perplexing. According to the schedule we retrieved from UA, All Might should be here as well. The warp guy said. So, you scumbags used the press as a cover and sneaked onto campus. Aizawa said. Where is he? I went through the trouble of bringing so many friends who are eager to meet him. They want All Might. The great symbol of peace. I can't believe he's not here. Maybe if I kill a few kids, he'll come out to play. The hand guy said. Freya's eyes widen. Aizawa's hair goes up and he releases the capture scarf. What? Real villains. No way. How could so many of them get into a UA facility this secure? Hiroshima asked. Yeah, 13. Yeyurazu said. 13 looked at her. Why aren't the alarms going off? Good question. I'm not sure. 13 said. Is the entire campus under attack? Or is this their only target? 
Freya asked, looking at the villains. Todoroki nodded. Either way, if the alarm sensors aren't being triggered, then of these villains must a quirk that's masking their presence here. They carefully chose this isolated facility as an entry point at a time when a class was being taught. They're fools for trespassing here, but they've thought this out. Whatever their plan, they must have a concrete objective in mind. But what is it? Todoroki said. Students gasp, but Freya knew he was right. 13, get them out of here. And alert the main campus. Actually, if they've got the ability to block our sensors, then they might be jamming our regular communications, too. Kaminari, try using your quirk to contact the school. Aizawa said. Yes, sir. Kaminari said. Father, what are you doing? Freya said. What are you gonna do? You can't fight them on your own. There's too many of them. Even if you can nullify their quirks, your fighting style's not suited for this. Your power works best in stealth and one-on-one -on -one fights. That's not gonna help with the group. Izuku said. Aizawa looks at his students. You can't be a pro if you only have one trick. Aizawa said. Students gasped. Father, I can help. Freya said. You stay with your class. No arguing. Aizawa said. Freya looked down but nodded. I'll leave it to you, 13. Aizawa jumps down towards the villains. Shooting squad. Take your aim. A villain with holes in his fingers said. A woman stood near with floating hair. Freya and Izuku stood watching. Didn't our intel say it was just gonna be 13 and all might out here? Who's that? The woman said. Aizawa ran towards them. The capture scarf surrounded him. Don't recognize him, but if he can take us down easy, he's dead. The gas mask said. Let's gun him down. The three villains said. Aizawa's eyes glowed red and nothing came out. Freya smirked as the villains started to freak out their quirks weren't working. Aizawa wrapped the villains in the capture scarf and lifted them into the air. He makes them collide in the air. Whoa, your dad is good. Hiroshima said. He is. Freya said as he attacked other villains. And she knows his tricks as well. Don't piss her off or she'll erase yours. Bakugo grumbled. I take it she used it on you a few times. Siro said, elbowing the hothead. Too many times to count. Freya said, watching her father. The man with the hands creeped her out. But he was watching Aizawa take down his friends. And whatever the monster was stands next to the villain as if it was waiting for orders. Let's go. Thirteen said. Freya took one last look at her father and ran with her friends towards the door. Ada had to call for Izuku to follow them. A warp formed in front of them as they ran towards the door. The warp formed a body like up from the ground. Bakugo grabbed Freya's arm and stopped her from running. Freya grabbed her goggles. There is no escape for you. The warp guy said. Freya gritted her teeth as Bakugo pushes her more behind him. It's a pleasure to meet you. We are the League of Villains. I know it's impolite, but we decided to invite ourselves into this haven of justice to say hello. And besides, isn't this a fitting place for All Might, the symbol of peace, to take his last breath? Freya clenched her fists. I believe he was supposed to be here today, and yet I see no sign of him. There must have been some sort of change in plans we could not have foreseen. Ah, well, in the end, I suppose it doesn't matter. He grows bigger and 13 opens where her black hole power comes out. I still have a role to play. Freya's eyes widen as Bekugo and Kirishima jump at the warp guy, yelling. An explosion rocks the area. Katsuki. Kirishima. Freya called. Smoke started to clear. Did you think we were just gonna stand around and let you tear this place to shreds? Kirishima asked. Freya put her goggles on and pulled on her scarf as the warp guy came out of the smoke. You live up to your school's reputation. The warp guy said. His full body came into view. But you should be more careful, children. Otherwise, someone might get hurt. Freya moved to stand behind Bakugo. Freya's long black hair flew up and her eyes got darker as she looked at him. Her quirk wasn't working well with the warp guy. Damn it, Freya said. Brett, what's going on? Bakugo called. It's not going to work with him. Not without his body, Freya said. So, the child of Eraser Head. The warp guy said as Freya's hair went down. She pulled down her goggles. You defiantly your father's child with his quirk. You three, get out of the way, right now. Thirteen said. The warp guy spread out the purple smoke like stuff. I'll scatter you across this facility to meet my comrades, and your deaths. The warp guy said. Purple streams surround them. Freya put an arm up to shield her face and used her hand to grab Bakugo's arm. Crap. What is this? Kirishima said. Freya gasped as she was swept off her feet along with Bakugo and Kirishima. A warp opened and Bakugo, Kirishima, and Freya fell out of the portal into a room. Bakugo grunted as Freya landed on top of him. Freya groaned as their heads collided. Brett, you have a hard head. Bakugo said. Freya pulled up and saw she was looking into Bakugo's red eyes. Did anyone tell you your eyes are pretty purple? Freya felt her face heat up. This is no time for flirting or romance. Hiroshima said. Freya heard footsteps running their way. Freya stood up and held out her hand for Bakugo. Bakugo took it and she quickly pulled him up. Hiroshima and Bakugo got in front of her. Freya pulled her goggles back on as villains ran in. This should be fun. Freya said. The other two nodded as the three got into fighting stances. Freya felt tiny standing between Kirishima and Bakugo. Both boys were tall. Freya put her hand on the capture scarf. Bakugo's eyes scanned the villains as some activated their quirks and others approached. He smirked. Freya. Now. Bakugo called. Freya's eyes flash dark purple as she activates her erase quirk as her black hair goes up. 
Bakugo smirks more as villains yell they lost their quirks. Freya captured a couple with her capture scarf and sent them flying into the walls as Kirishima and Bakugo attacked the others. Freya put up her force field as men ran at her from behind and they collided with it. Really, they are weaklings, Freya said. Say goodbye, Bakugo said as he blasts another villain as they went after Freya. Freya jumped towards a villain. She spun and kicked him in the head knocking him out cold. Bakugo blasted a few more as Kirishima was fighting a man with a sword. The sword was destroyed after a few hits from Kirishima. He delivers a blow knocking him out. Bakugo and Kirishima were panting. Freya pulls down her goggles as she closes her eyes and her hair goes back to normal. Freya looks at Bakugo and Kirishima. I think that's the last of these guys, Freya said. Bakugo nodded. Bunch of weaklings, Bakugo said. Hiroshima turned to his friends. All right, let's hurry and find the rest of our class. If all three of us are still in the USJ, then everyone else probably is, too, Hiroshima said. He clutched his fist. And not all of them have the offensive skills we do. We gotta make sure they're safe. Especially since we screwed things up when we got in the way earlier. If 13 had been able to suck up that villain, then we never would have been separated like that. We have to make it up to the others. You wanna track everyone down, have fun. But I'm gonna go destroy that warpy bastard. Freya, you coming with? Bakugo asked. Yes, I'm worried about my dad. Freya said. Huh. Our physical attacks didn't hurt that guy and Freya's erase quirk didn't work on him either. Come on don't be an idiot. Kirishima said. Bakugo got in Kirishima's face but Freya heard something moving behind them. Shut up. I'm gonna take him down because he's their way in and out. Bakugo said. Freya scanned the room and saw nothing, but could hear something drop to the floor. Her hands glowed. If I cut off their escape route, they'll be stuck here and have to pay for what they've done. We'll just have to figure it out. Freya put up a force field as something came flying their way and the villain hit the force field and hit the ground, turning into a chameleon-type villain. Quick reflexes, shorty, Kirishima said. Freya just smirked as Bakugo grabbed the villain by the head and lifted him up. Anyways, if all these villains are small fries like these guys were, then our classmates can handle them, Bakugo said. He dropped the villain on the floor. You getting fast with the reflexes. Freya smiled. Sickney when do you act so calm and rational? Usually you're all like. Kirishima said. Like an angry Pomeranian. Freya asked. Kirishima and Freya started laughing. Bakugo felt a vein was going to pop. Freya knew how to push his buttons but not enough to make him mad like the other extras like to do. I'm always calm and rational, you red-haired loser. And I'm not an angry Pomeranian, brat. Bakugo said. I like this girl already, Kirishima said. Freya pushed her hair out of her face. Go find the others if you want to. Freya, let's go, Bakugo said as he started walking. Wait, hold up, Kirishima said. Freya and Bakugo look at him. I think what you're really saying is that you believe in our classmates. He hardens his arms and then punches his fists together. Bakugo looks at him bored. Let's go, Freya said, running out the door. Bakugo and Kirishima follow her. They run towards the water fountain and Freya's eyes widen. Whoa, All Might must have just got here when we were fighting. Kirishima said. The bird-like monster had his legs on the ground and the rest of his body was through the warp, holding up all might. There was blood on his shirt. Freya didn't see her father anywhere near the fountain. Freya had a stinking feeling as Bakugo blasted off towards the warp guy, who appeared in front of Izuku as he was running to save all might. Freya and Kirishima followed fast as Freya pulled up her goggles. Bakugo blasts the warp guy. Get the hell out of my was, Deku. Bakugo yelled. Izuku gasped as Bakugo grabbed a metal minding on the warp guy and slammed him into the ground. Ice formed across the ground hitting the bird creature and spread up across the arm and came to a stop at the hand. Todoroki was standing there. One of your poorly trained thugs told me you're here because you think you can kill All Might. Todoroki said. All Might grabs the monster's hand and pulls it free. He jumps off and lands near Todoroki. All Might grabs his side. Izuku gasps. Are you okay? Izuku asked. Hiroshima jumps at the leader with the hands on his body. The leader jumps out of his way. Hiroshima jumps back. Damn, that was gonna be cool. Hiroshima said. Freya stood next to Bakugo. Guess I found your body that time, you smoky bastard. Bakugo said. Freya looked down. He was holding the metal piece that looked like. The symbol of peace will not be defeated by delinquents like you. Freya said, glaring at the leader. The leader eyed the girl. Freya held her capture scarf, but something told her inside to stay back for now. Kaken. Everyone. Izuku said. He rubbed away the tears. Everyone stood ready to fight. The leader looks at the warp guy. Kirajiri. How could you let this brat get the best of you? You've gotten us into a real jam here. The leader said. Bakugo laughed and looked at Kirajiri. Heh. You got careless, you dumb villain. It wasn't hard to figure you out. Only certain parts of you turn into that smoking warp gate. You use that mist to hide your actual body, as kind of a distraction. Thinking that made you safe. That's why we missed and Freya couldn't use her quirk. But if you didn't have a body, you wouldn't be wearing this neck armor, right? You're not immune to physical attacks if they're well aimed. Kirajiri grunts and groans. Bakugo causes some explosions on the neck. Don't move. Bakugo bends down further. You try anything funny, and I'll bow your ass up right now. You got it. 
They'll be cleaning you up for weeks. He had a crazed look on his face. Oh, that doesn't sound heroic, Kirishima said. The leader turned to the bird-like creature. Namu, the leader said. The Namu screeched as it slid out of the warp and pulled its body up. It broke its arm that had the ice on it as it stood up. The eyes moved. How is that thing still moving? He's all messed up. Izuku asked. All Might held out his arm. Stay back, everybody. All Might said. Freya's eyes widened as the Namu suddenly started growing its arm back. Impossible. Freya said. What is this? I thought you said his power was shock absorption. All Might said. I didn't say that was his only quirk. He also has super regeneration. The leader said. Freya gritted her teeth. Namu has been modified to take you on even at 100% of your power. He's basically a highly efficient punching bag that hits back. Everyone got ready. Bakugo turned his head towards the leader. First, we need to free our method of escape. Freya jumped in front of Bakugo. Huh? Kirishima asked. Get him in the girl, Namu. The leader said. The Namu charges. Freya went to put up the force field but All Might got in front of her in a gust of wind and something sent her and Bakugo flying. Bakugo grabs her hand and pulls her against him. He grunted as his back hit the ground. Freya sat up and Bakugo followed. Kirishima, Todoroki, and Izuku were with them. You all right? Bakugo asked. I'll be fine, Freya said. Such force, Izuku said. Freya looks and sees the Namu holding Kirijiri. Takan, Freya. He turns and sees Freya and Bakugo near him. Takan, Freya. Whoa, that's awesome, you dodged him. Shut up, no we didn't, you damn nerd. Bakugo said. He stood up and held out a hand for Freya. Freya took it and he helped her up. Then how did you get over here? Kirishima said. Isn't it obvious? Freya said, looking at the smoke. All Might came out of it with his arms up. All Might, Izuku said. These are kids and you didn't hold back. All Might asked. I didn't have much choice. He was threatening my companion. Besides, these kids are no angels. The plain looking one. The leader said. Izuku gasps. He tried to kill me with a maxed out punch. What kind of hero does something like that? You think you can get away with being as violent as you want if you say it's for the sake of others. The leader holds out his arms. Well, you know what, All Might. That pisses me off. Why do people get to decide that some violent acts are heroic and others are villainous? Casting judgment as to what's good and what's evil. You think you're the symbol of peace. Hi. You're just another government-sponsored instrument of violence. And violence always breeds more violence. I'll make sure the world understand that once you're dead. You're nothing but a lunatic. Criminals like you, you always try and make your actions sound noble. But admit it, you're only doing this because you like it. Isn't that right? All Might asked. The leader lowered his eyes. We've got them outnumbered. Todoroki said. Izuku nodded. And Kaken found the mist guy's weakness. Izuku said. These dudes may act really tough, but we can take them down now with All Might's help. Let's do this, Kirishima said. Freya felt unease with the leader. Something about him didn't sit right and she didn't know what his quirk was. All Might started walking. Don't attack, All Might said. The students gasp. Get out of here. You would have been in trouble earlier if it weren't for me, remember. You need our help, Todoroki said. I thank you for your assistance, but this is different, All Might said. He clenched his fist. It's gonna be alright. Just sit back and watch a pro at work. But you're too hurt. You're bleeding. And you're almost out of Tim. Izuku stopped. Freya looked at him wondering what he was going to say. But All Might gave the thumbs up. All Might turned to the villains. Namu. Kirajiri. Kill him. I'll deal with the children. The leader said. The students got in fighting stances. Let's clear this level and go home. The leader ran towards the students. Heads up, we're fighting after all. Kirishima said. The leader stops as the Namu charges and All Might jumps at it and meets its punch, sending the leader flying. Freya put her arms in front of her as the wind blows at them. Weren't you listening? One of his powers is shock absorption. The leader said. Yeah, what about it? All Might said. All Might hits the Namu and they started delivering blows to each other. Freya and the others were sliding across the floor. Bakugo grabbed Freya's arm and pulled her down, so she wasn't blown away. They knelt on the ground. He's gonna fight that brain guy head on. Izuku asked. Looks like it. Freya said. Whoa, they're so fast. Kirishima said. Kirijiri was moving back by the leader. No, I can't get near them. Kirijiri said. Freya held onto the ground as All Might kept coming at the Namu with hissed fists. All Might took a punch to the stomach and blood came out of his mouth. He grabs the Namu and starts pushing him. The punches were getting fast. Is he using his power at 100%? Freya said. I think so. Izuku said. He looked and sounded worried. All Might yells as he punches the Namu and send it flying across the ground. The leader did not look happy as All Might jumps at the Namu. They start kicking each other around. They couldn't hear what All Might was saying to the Namu with all the wind. He grabs the Namu and slams it into the ground, creating a crater. The students watch in shock. Go beyond. All Might said as he got in front of the Namu and swings his arm back. Plus ultra. He punches the Namu with such force, it sends the Namu flying right through the glass dome. It caused the building to shake. Freya sighed in relief. Bakugo pulled Freya to her feet. That was like the finishing move in a video game. He beat the shock absorption right out of him. I've never seen that kind of brute strength. Kirishima said. Imagine having power like that. Bakugo said. He must have been punching that monster so fast, he couldn't regenerate. 
Freya said. Smoke surrounded All Might. That is definitely what it takes to be a pro. Freya thought. All Might turned towards the leader and Kirajiri. You've been bested, villains. All Might said. The leader was shaking in anger. Surrender. We all want to get this over with quickly. The leader started taping his neck and then started scratching his neck. Freya wondered what his quirk was. What's wrong? The leader gasps. Not attacking me. Didn't you say you were going to clear this level earlier? Well, come and get me, if you dare. The leader gasps. Everyone stood waiting to see if he would make a move or not. Man, this is intense. Bakugo said. What is he waiting for? Freya asked. As expected. There's no reason for us to fight now. He'll handle this. Todoroki said. Izuku gasps. Come on, Midoriya. We should regroup with the other guys. The last thing we want to do is get taken hostage or get in his way. Kirishima said. Izuku was looking at All Might. Freya noticed the smoke was coming off All Might's body. Something wasn't right. What are you scared? All Might said, watching the leader. What the hell are they waiting on? Freya asked. Who knows? Bakugo said. The leader reaches with both hands and starts scratching his neck like crazy. If only Namu was here, he'd rush you right now. Pound you into the ground without giving it a second thought. The leader said. Tamura Shigaraki. Please, do not fret. Look at him. He has definitely weakened. Namu's attacks were successful. Kirajiri said. Shigaraki seemed to calm down and look at All Might. He's on his own. The children appear to be frozen in fear. There were groans of pain from the other villains. And, look, our underlings are recovering. Villains were starting to get up. We likely still have a few minutes before their reinforcements arrive. If you and I work together we can do this. We haven't missed our chance to kill All Might. Sigaraki lowered his hands. Yeah, yeah, you're right. This is it. We have no choice. We have to do it now. Shigaraki got in a stance. I mean, the big end boss is right here. Footsteps came and the students turned to see villains approaching. I think All Might can hold his own against those two main guys. Kirishima said. He hardened his arms. Let's make sure these dudes don't hurt anybody else. Freya and Izuku stood watching All Might and the two villains. Will you be joining us? Todoroki asked. Izuku clutched his fist. Freya just didn't trust Shigaraki without knowing his quirk. Shigaraki charges at All Might. Consider this revenge for what you did to Namu. Shigaraki said. Freya's hands glowed as she got ready to put a force field around All Might. Air sends her hair flying as Izuku jumps in the air. Midoriya. Freya yelled. His legs looked broken as his arm glowed as he neared Kirajiri. Izuku yells. Don't you touch All Might. You stupid villain. Izuku said. Freya's eyes glowed dark purple as she erased Shigaraki's quirk as he put a hand through the warp to grab Izuku. Shigaraki noticed the girl as Izuku neared his hand. He glared at her. That girl. Shigaraki said. A gunshot rings out and shoots the hand. Freya blinks as he pulls the hand back. Freya and the others turn to see the teachers standing on top the stairs. Sorry everyone. I know we're a bit late, but I got the teachers over here as fast as I could. The principal Nezu said. Freya sighed in relief. Ada is with them. Hiroshima said. Your class rep has returned. I fulfilled my duty. And I've brought reinforcements. Ada yelled. Villains started shooting at the teachers. Present Mike stepped forward. He lets out a yell sending shock waves at the villains and sends them flying. The teachers started to round up the villains and get the students and other parts out. Izuku laid on the ground injured but All Might was dealing with him. Freya looked around, wondering where her dad was. I'm sure he's fine. Kirishima said. Freya. Yuraka yelled, running towards her. Yuraka. Have you seen my father? Freya asked. It's why I come to get you. The police are looking for you. Your father got badly injured in the fight with the brain creature and they are gonna take you to him. Yuraka said. Freya took off running with Yuraka. Kirishima and Bakugo share some worried looks and Bakugo runs after Freya. Aftermath of the USJ. Yuraka and Freya came out of the dome building. The others were standing around. Police was loading the villains that were left behind, except Shigaraki and Kirijiri, who got away when the teachers arrived. The head cop, Tsukachi was making sure the students were all right. I got her. Yuraka said, grabbing Freya's arm and pulling her towards the cop. The cop turned. There you are. Tsukachi said. Bakugo came over to Freya. How's my dad? Freya asked. He took a terrible beating from the monster your friends described. He's at the hospital now. I can have one of the squads take you to him. Tsukachi said. Sir, can I go with her? Bakugo said. You don't have to. Freya said, looking at him. Let me make sure that's alright with your principal. Tsukachi said. He disappeared. I'm going with to make sure he's alright and be there as a friend. Stop complaining, brat. Bakugo said. Freya didn't argue. She had to bite her bottom lip. Mina and Gyro came over and hugged her. He'll be fine. Just keep us updated. Mina said. The girls had her number. Tsukachi came back. Principal gave the okay for you to go, Bakugo. One of the officers will take you to the hospital. Tsukachi said. An officer led them to a patrol car. Freya got in the back with Bakugo. The cop drove off. Freya looked out the window. Bakugo saw the worry on her face. She already lost one parent at a young age. Freya jumped when she felt her hand be grabbed. She looked at Bakugo. Stop fretting, Brett. He's strong. He'll pull through. Bakugo said with his signature smirk. A few hours at the hospital. Freya sat in the hospital in the waiting room. 
Nurses told her and Bekugo that Aizawa was being looked over and possible surgery. Hiroshima had stopped in to bring their sets of clothes and briefcases and check on his teacher. Bakugo had disappeared for a little bit after they both changed out of their hero costumes. Brett. Freya looked up to see Bekugo holding out a mug of coffee. She grabbed it and took a long sip. Bakugo sat down next to her. Any news? Freya shook her head. Nothing yet. Freya said. She laid her head on Bakugo's shoulder. He tensed a bit. Thank you for being here. TCH. Bakugo said. She didn't mind. She felt exhausted after a long day and just wanted answers. Bakugo pulled out his phone to see a message from his mom seeing if he was alright and call when he can. Bakugo took a sip of his coffee as he let Freya lay her head on his shoulder. It seemed to calm his anger with what happened at the USJ having her next to him. He laid his head against hers. She smiled lightly. Miss Aizawa. A doctor said, coming up to her. Freya got up and Bakugo followed. How is he? Freya asked. The bones in his arms are splintered and he's got facial fracturing. Fortunately, there doesn't seem to be any serious brain damage. But his orbital floor has been almost completely destroyed. We have no way of knowing if his eyesight will be impaired. The doctor said. Bakugo and Freya's eyes widen. All from that Namu. It's gonna affect his quirk with that damage unless recovery girl can help him. Freya thought. Bakugo looked shocked. Ken, can I see him? Freya asked. Of course. He'll be kept overnight to be monitored. The doctor said. Freya goes to follow but stops when she sees Bakugo looking at his phone. You coming with? Freya asked. Go ahead. I'll come find you. I have to call my mom. Bakugo said. Freya nodded and followed the doctor. Bakugo sighed and called his mom. About damn time you called me. Do you know how worried I have been about you and Freya? Katsuki. Mitsuki near blew out Bakugo's eardrum when she picked up on the first ring. Mitsuki along with Izuku's mother had helped babysit Freya when Aizawa had to work after her mom died. Mitsuki considered Freya like a daughter she had never had. Shut up, you hag. We're fine. Bakugo yelled into the phone. Patients and nurses looked at Bakugo. I'm at the hospital with Freya. Is she hurt? Mitsuki asked. No, her father is in bad shape and has to spend the night here at the hospital. I don't want to leave Freya home alone. Can she come spend the night or at least till her dad gets out? Bakugo asked. He explained the injuries to his mom. Freya can stay as long as she wants. Mitsuki said without hesitation. Mitsuki had seen the three grow up together through school activities, but she saw how Freya was the only one that could calm Bakugo down when he had his anger spurts. I'll let you know when we are heading home. Bakugo said and hung up. Freya stepped into the room to see her dad covered in bandages. He looked bad. Freya walked over to him. Dad? Freya asked. His eyes opened barely and looked towards Freya. Freya, you're alright. Aizawa said. I was warped to the collapse zone with Kirishima and Bakugo. We're all fine. Except Izuku broke his legs and 13 is here hurt as well. Freya said. Aizawa sighed in relief that everyone was alright. Bakugo is here, but he needed to make a phone call. I'm glad you're safe. Aizawa said. Footsteps came. Freya turned to see Bakugo standing in the door. I'm happy to see you're alright Mr. Aizawa. My parents gave the okay for Freya to spend the night till you're home. Bakugo said. Aizawa was surprised of his calmness but nodded. It's fine. Aizawa said. He was having issues keeping his eyes open. Freya bent down and pressed a kiss to her father's forehead. I love you, dad. Freya said. I love you too, kid. Aizawa said. His eyes closed. Freya came up to Bakugo. You didn't have to do that. Freya said. The old hag is worried about us and I don't think you should be home alone, brat. Bakugo said as they head out of the hospital. Bakugo sent a text to his mom letting her know they were heading to the Aizawa house to get an overnight bag and be heading home. They arrived at the Aizawa house and Freya quickly packed a bag and they head to the Bakugo mansion. It was in the richest part of the town. It was a huge house. Freya always loved coming here to visit as a kid. Mitsuki had the two pulled into a hug before they were even in the door. I was so worried. Mitsuki hugged the two tight. Masaru shook his head. Let them breathe. Masaru said. Let go old hag. You're crushing us. We're fine. Bakugo growled. Mitsuki looked like she was going to blow her gasket as she let him go. Freya grabbed Bakugo and pulled him into his room before him and his mom got into another fight. Both had the same tempers. After dinner and late into the night, Bakugo laid awake in his room as Freya slept on an air mattress on the floor. She laid curled up under the blankets. Bakugo stared up at the ceiling. They were after all might. It was a clear plan attack. Bakugo thought. Bakugo. Freya said in a whisper. He turned his head to find her turn to face him. Get some sleep, Brad. It's late. Bakugo said. I can't. I'm worried about my dad. Freya said. Bakugo lifted the blanket. Come here, brat. Bakugo said. Freya was hesitant. It had been a while since they did this when one couldn't sleep as a kid. Come on. I don't have all night. I'm getting tired as well. Freya got off the mattress and got in next to Bakugo. Freya and Bakugo curled up looking at each other. He'll be fine. Your father is strong. Freya smiled. Thank you. Freya said as she closed her eyes and fell asleep. Bakugo pushed a hair out of her face. She looked so peaceful as she slept. Bakugo gave a small smile. He was starting to realize that he was falling for his best friend. Sports festival. The next day, Freya and Bakugo sat in class. Both had woken up with Bakugo wrapped around Freya's body and both tired. 
They walked to school. Freya had her head resting on her arms, still tired. Hey guys, did you watch the news last night? Hagakur asked. Freya lifted her head. Her and Bakugo had seen that the USJ attack had made the news. Yeah, Freya said. It was so cool that we got a few seconds of screen time. Though I bet nobody noticed me hanging out in the background. Hagakur said. Probably not. Shoji said. It is difficult to stand out when you're just gloves. Ajiro said. We're totally big deals. Those news channels love us. We're basically celebrities. Kaminari said. Yeah, it's kinda crazy, right? Hiroshima said. Jairo was twirling one of her earphones. Get over yourself. The hero course that pumps out pros was attacked and that's what they care about. Jairo said. Who knows what woulda happened to us if the teachers hadn't shown up. Siro said. Mineta nearly was out of his seat with tears in his eyes. Why did you say that? Mineta said. Freya and Bakugo glared at the purple-headed pervert. I'm gonna pee myself just thinking about it. Bakugo lost his nerve. Oh, shut up. Grow a pair, loser. Bakugo yelled at Mineta. Freya ignored his outburst, because Mineta was getting on her nerve at the moment. Did you guys see All Might fighting the bird guy? That dude was super strong, and he still destroyed him. Sato said, punching the air. Yes, his strength is truly a thing of wonder. Takoyami said. Ada came running into the room. Attention. Homeroom class is about to begin. Ada said. Bakugo groaned as Ada came to a stop in front of the desk. Everyone stop talking and take your seats. Freya's head hit the desk. Uh, we're all sitting. Hiroshima said. Yeah, you're the only one standing. Freya said, lifting her head up. Ada dragged himself to the desk. Hey, Freya. Do you know if your father is still in hospital? Yuraka asked. I tried calling on the way here, but no answer. Freya said. So, then who is gonna teach our class if he's still in the hospital? Mina said. Freya shrugged. Bakugo was watching her from the corner of his eye as his hand rested on his chin. The door opens and Freya's eyes widen seeing her father in the doorway. Morning class. Aizawa said. Dad, what are you doing here? Freya asked, seeing him covered head to toe in bandages as he walked up to his desk. Whoa, what a pro. Kaminari said. Ada raised his hand. Mr. Aizawa, I'm glad you're okay. Ada said. You call that okay? Yoraka asked, seeing the teacher limp. He looks like shit. Bakugo whispered to Freya. You're telling me. Freya said. Aizawa turns to look at the class. He didn't miss the concerned look on his daughter's face. My well-being is irrelevant. What's more important is that your fight isn't over yet. Aizawa said. Our fight. Bakugo said. Don't tell me. Izuku said. Huh. Freya asked. Not more bad guys. Wineta said. Aizawa glares slightly, not happy to be interrupted. The UA Sports Festival is about to start. Aizawa said. Yes. Kirishima yelled. Freya nearly facepalmed. You have to go scaring us like that dad. Freya thought as she smiled. Let's go kick some ass. Kirishima said. Kaminari shoved his hand in his face to shut him up. Wait a second. Kaminari said. Is it really such a good idea to hold the sports festival so soon after the villains snuck inside? Freya asked. They could attack once we're all in the same place. Ajiro said. Aizawa sighs. Apparently, the administration thinks this is a good way to show that the threat has been handled and our school is safer than ever. Plus, they're beefing up security compared to past years. This event is a huge opportunity for all students at UA. It's not something we can cancel because of a few villains. Aizawa said. Oh, I'm sorry, but why not? It's just a sports festival. Mineta said. Freya and Bakugo roll their eyes as Izuku turns to look at Mainta. Huh. Mainta, don't you know how important this competition is? Izuku asked. Of course, I do. I just don't want to get murdered. Mainta said. If he doesn't shut up, I will murder him. Bakugo growled so Freya heard. She elbowed him. Our sports festival is one of the most watched events in the entire world. In the past, everyone obsessed over the Olympic Games. But then quirks started appearing. Now, the Olympics have been drastically reduced in terms of scale and viewership. For anyone who cares about competition, there's only one tournament that matters. The UA Sports Festival. Aizawa said. That's right. And top heroes everywhere will be watching. Yeirazu said. She clenched her fist. This is where you get scouted. Sure, unless you're dead. Mina said. Freya had to grab Bakugo's arm from getting up. Don't. I don't want my dad more hurt. Freya whispered. Bakugo clenched his fists and stayed sitting. She's right. After graduating, a lot of people join pro agencies as a psychic. Kaminari said. Yeah, but that's as far as some people go. They miss their chance to go indie and stay eternal sidekicks. Gyro said. She looked at Kaminari. Actually, that's probably where you're headed. You're kinda dumb. Freya snorted at Kaminari's face. That's true that joining a famous hero agency can garner your greater experience and popularity. That's why the festival matters. If you wanna go pro one day, then this event could open the path for you. Aizawa said. Freya was excited. Her and Bakugo would watch the event every year together and sometimes Izuku joined them. Now she had the chance to be in it. Her and Bakugo chair smiles. One chance a year. Three chances in a lifetime. No aspiring hero can afford to miss this festival. That means you better not slack off on your training. Yes, sir. Students said. Cass is dismissed. Aizawa said. Classes continued. Freya mind was wondering about the coming. Sports festival. It was now lunchtime. 
That villain stuff sucked, sure, but I'm pumped for these games, Hiroshima said. We put on a good show and we're basically on the road to being pros, Siro said. Yeah, this is why I'm even here in the first plat, Sido said. We get so few chances. We have to make the most of this, Takoyami said. Everyone was talking about the festival. Freya grunts as Mina jumps on her. Freya, you excited for this? Mina asked. I am. It's a chance in a lifetime, Freya said. Brett. Freya looked at Bakugo. He was looking at her as he got up. You and I are training together till this sports festival starts. Sounds good. Freya said with a smirk. Can I join you guys? Kirishima said. I don't. Bakugo started. I think it's a good idea. Fight against someone new. Freya said, shooting Bakugo a glare as she stood up. TCH. Whatever. Let's get lunch before the extras eat everything. Bakugo said as they head down to get lunch. Gyro and Mina joined them for lunch with Kaminari and Kirishima. Bakugo and Kirishima got into an argument over something about the sports festival. Want to do a shopping trip after this festival is all over with? Mina asked. That sounds like fun. The boys are no fun and don't like to go shopping. Freya said. I heard that. You take too long when it comes to clothes and books. Bakugo growled. Freya smirked at him. Mina chuckled. Maybe all of us girls can go so we can all get to know each other. Gyro said. Then we will plan to go shopping. Mina said. The three boys groaned. After lunch, it was training and Freya and Bakugo didn't hold back as they trained together. Hiroshima couldn't keep up with the two. Aizawa couldn't help but shake the head at the two, but he knew the two were good fighting. Freya had Bakugo fight with Kirishima while she went to others to help train and learn their quirks more. At the end of the day, Freya stood with Yuraka looking at the door where other classes stood in the way, looking in. What the heck? Freya asked. Bum, why the heck are you all here? Yuraka asked. Do you students have some sort of business with our class? Ada asked. Why are you blocking our doorway? I won't let you hold us hostage. Minda asked. Bakugo came walking up to the door. They're scouting out the competition, idiots. Bakugo said. He shoved Minda and Izuku out of the way. We're the class that survived a real villain attack. Bakugo said. Let's just hope he doesn't explode anybody. Izuku said. Bakugo, behave. Freya said. TCH. Bakugo said. He looks at the kids standing in the door. Some looked scared. At least now you know what a future pro looks like. Now move it, extras. Freya sighed. You can't walk around calling people extras just because you don't know who they are. Ada said. Is he always like this? Yuraka asked as Freya rubbed her temple. He's actually playing nice for now. Freya grumbled. So, this is class 1A. A boy with blue hair and bags under his eyes, pushes through the crowd. I heard you guys were impressive, but you just sound like an ass. Bakugo glared at the guy. Is everyone in the hero course delusional, or just you? Freya grabbed Bakugo's arm as he lets out a growl. How sad to come here and find a bunch of egomaniacs. He rubbed the back of his head and looked at the class. I wanted to be in the hero course, but like many others here, I was forced to choose a different track. Such is life. TCH. Bakugo said. I didn't cut it the first time around, but I have another chance. If any of us do well in the sports festival, the teachers can decide to transfer us to the hero course. And they'll have to transfer people out to make room. The blue-haired boy said. Freya, Izuku, Ida, and Yoraka gasp. Bakugo glared at the boy, scouting the competition. Maybe some of my peers are, but I'm here to let you know that, if you don't bring your very best, I'll steal your spot right from under you. Consider this a declaration of war. Students looked worried. Who is this guy? Freya thought as Bakugo and the boy stared each other down. Hey you. A silver hair boy pops up in the crowd. I'm from class 1B next door to you. We heard you fought some villains, and I came to see if that was true. But you're just a bunch of brats who think you're better than us. So everyone hates our class now. Freya thought as a sweat drops from her head. Talk all you want. It'll just be more embarrassing when you're code. The silver hair dude said. Bakugo grabbed Freya's arm and pulled her away from the crowd. Don't you ignore me. Hiroshima ran to the door. Dude, where are you going? You gotta say something. It's your fault they're all hating us, Bakugo. Kirishima said. Freya looked at Bakugo as he stopped. Katsuki, you know he's right. Freya said. Bakugo looked at his classmates. These people don't matter. Bakugo said. Huh? Kirishima asked. The only thing that's important is that I beat them. Bakugo said. Bakugo pushed through the crowd and Freya follows. Hey, I'm coming for you. The silver-haired boy yelled. Freya and Bakugo walked in silence. The days went with everyone training for the sports festival. On their days off Freya and Bakugo trained in his backyard as others trained. Aizawa got the forms Freya needed so she could use the capture scarf in the sports festival. Freya was happy she could use it. Early morning before the sports festival, Freya was jogging around the block in leggings and a tank top. Her music was blaring in the headphones in her ears. She was a nervous wreck with the sports festival, but she was really looking forward to it. She came to a stop right outside her house. She pulled her headphones out. Today's the day, Freya thought. Later in the afternoon, Freya stood with her classmates as she stood in her gym uniform and the capture scarf on. Least you gotta prove to have that with you. Izuku said. Dad helped push it through. Freya said. I heard your father is doing the commentary with present Mike. Gyro said. Yeah. He's not thrilled on it. Freya said. 
Aw, oh, man. I was totally hoping I could wear my costume. Mina said. At least everyone will be in uniforms. That'll keep things fair, right? Ajiro asked. I wonder what they have in store for us in the first round. Sido said. No matter what they're prepared, we must persevere. Takoyami said. Yes, Shoji said. Ida opens the door. Everyone, get your game faces on. We're entering the arena soon. Ida said. Freya stretched her body as Minda tried to calm his fears. Midoriya. Todoroki said, walking up to Izuku. Freya watched. Hey, Todoroki. What's up? Izuku said. Everyone watched the two. From an objective standpoint, I think it's fairly clear that I'm stronger than you. Todoroki said. Uh, um, yeah. Izuku said. However, you've got All Might in your corner, helping you out. Todoroki said. Izuku gasped. Freya raised an eyebrow. I'm not here to pry about what's going on between you two. But know that I will beat you. Izuku gasps again as Todoroki stares him down. Freya came up to Beck Hugo, Kirishima and Kaminari. Whoa, what's with all these declarations of war lately? Kaminari asked. Kirishima goes up to Todoroki and puts a hand on his shoulder. Why are you picking a fight all of a sudden? And right before we get started, Kirishima asked. We're not here to be each other's friends. Todoroki said. He shoved Kirishima off him. He walks away. Don't forget. This isn't a team effort. Izuku looked down. Wait a sec, Todoroki. Izuku said. Todoroki stopped and turned to look at Izuku. I don't know what's going through your head or why you think you'd need to tell me that you'll beat me. And, yeah, of course you're better than me. In fact, you probably have way more potential than anyone in the hero course. That's why you got in so easily. Midoriya. Freya whispered. Midoriya, maybe you're being a little hard on yourself, and us. Kirishima said. No, he's right, you guys. All the other courses, they're coming for us with everything they've got. We're all gonna have to fight to stand out. Izuku said. Todoroki looked at Izuku. Izuku looked up with a determined look on his face. And I'll be aiming for the top, too. Freya smiled at her friend. Fine. Todoroki said. TCH. Bakugo said. They stood in the tunnel waiting for the announcement to head out. Freya stood with Gyro and Mina. Bakugo stood in front of her. Hey, make some noise, all your rabid sports fans. Present Mike yelled. Cheers rang through the stadium. Sounds like it's packed. Freya said. Gyro and Mina nodded. Get those cameras prepped, media hordes. This year we're bringing you some of the hottest performances in sports festival history, guaranteed. I've only got one question before we start this show, are you ready? Let me hear you scream as our students make their way to the main stage. Class want to walk towards the entrance to the field. This first group are no strangers to the spotlight. You know them for withstanding a villain attack, the dazzling students lighting up your TVs with solid gold skills the hero course students of Class 1A. The students step out onto the field. Freya was not surprised to see the stands packed with people. I didn't think it'd be this packed. Freya said. Present Mike sure did talk us up a lot. Kinda makes me nervous. How you feeling, man? Kirishima asked. I'm not worried. Makes me wanna win this thing even more. Bakugo said. The other classes were introduced and joined one on the field. Midnight stood on the platform. She was going to be the chief umpire this year for the first years. Now, the introductory speech. Midnight said. Um, someone should talk to Midnight about what she's wearing. Kirishima said. Yeah, that costume should come with a warning. Kaminari said. Is that really appropriate apparel for a high school game? Takayami said. You should have seen her costume when she first showed up to be popular. Freya said. The boys looked at her. She's the reason there are costume regulations. Minda was almost drooling. Silence, everyone. Midnight said. She moved her whip around. And for the student pledge, we have Katsuki Bakugo. Everyone looked at Bakugo in shock. Bakugo heads up to the stage with his hands in his pockets. Uh, he's the first year rep. Izuku said. Apparently, Freya said. I guess that hothead did finish first in the entrance tests. Siro said. Only for the hero course exams. A girl said. Oh, right. Izuku said. That girl obviously hates us. Siro said. Yeah, and we've got Bakugo to thank for them not liking our class. Kaminari said. Bakugo stepped up to the stage and right to the microphone. Freya watched him as there was a silence in the crowd. I just wanna say I'm gonna win. Bakugo said. Freya rubbed her temples. I had a feeling he was gonna say something like that. Freya thought as students started booing at Bakugo. Class 1A is so full of themselves. Get off the stage. Ada jumps forward and starts making a motion with his hand. Why would you be so disrespectful? You're representing us all. Ada said. Bakugo turned to look at everyone. Not my fault the rest of you are just stepping stone to my victory. Bakugo said, putting a thumbs down. Well I know where we stand with this. Freya thought as a vein popped in her forehead. I'm gonna crush this overconfident jerk. The silver-haired guy said. He clenched his fist. I can't wait to knock him down to size. Bakugo walked off the stage with Ida still yelling at him. He came over and stood next to Freya. You know you put targets on our backs now. Freya said. TCH. I don't care. Bakugo said. Freya sighed. The screen flashed first game. Without further ado, it's time for us to get started. It's time for the first game. This is where you begin feeling the pain. 
The first fateful game of the festival. Midnight said, moving the whip around. The screen appears behind her, and it starts to spin. What could it be? It stopped and the screen read obstacle race. Ta-da. Obstacle course. Freya said. All 11 classes will participate in this treacherous contest. The track is 4 kilometers around the outside of the stadium. I don't want to restrain anyone, at least in this game. Midnight said. She licked her lips. As long as you don't leave the course, you're free to do whatever your heart desires. Cheers rang through the crowd. Now then, take your places, contestants. Freya clenched her fists. The first game was about to begin. Obstacle course. They stood at the entrance to the tunnel that would take them to the obstacle course. Freya stood with Momo and Kaminari. The dots above the door started going out. Freya watched with patience. The last light goes out. Begin. Midnight yelled. Everyone went running into the tunnel. What should we be paying attention to in the early stages of the race? Present Mike called. The doorway. Aizawa said watching the screen. Freya grunted as she was shoved. People were pushing each other trying to get through the tunnel. That's it. Freya said. Her hands glowed and she created a fourth step above everyone's head, and she jumped up in the air and landed on the step above the crowd. Freya ran using four steps to get towards the entrance. Brett. Really? Back Hugo called. Freya ignored him. They are testing us to see how we get out and we can use our quirks. Time to do some showing off especially with my father and my godmother watching. Freya thought. Ryuku had called her to wish her luck and tell her she'd be watching. Ice suddenly starts to form through the tunnel. Freya put up a force field around her as she ran across the four steps before the ice hit her. Freya couldn't help but laugh as she came out of the tunnel to see half of the students frozen to the ground. Freya jumped to the ground and ran after Todoroki. Yells came. Freya turned her head to see Bakugo blasting after them and Yeyurazu using a metal pole to get across the ice. Kirishima was right behind them. Here I come. Kirishima yelled. Aoyomi was blasting out with his naval laser. Freya smirked as she saw the others following right behind. Freya turned back and ran. Nice trick, Todoroki. Yeyurazu yelled. I won't let you get away so easily. Bakugo said. He had a crazy look on his face. He didn't care about Freya. She was right behind Todoroki. Aizawa was impressed his daughter and Todoroki got out and were ahead, with their class right behind him. You icy hot bastard. Bakugo flips and sends a huge explosion to send him flying. Freya heard popping and saw Minda bouncing off his balls over the ice. You think you're so cool, but I've outsmarted you. Minda said. Freya rolled her eyes. Hi. How pathetic, Todoroki. He grabbed a ball. Eat this, my special attack. Freya gasped as an arm of a machine sent Minda flying. Maita, Freya yelled. Everyone stopped and Freya gritted her teeth. The machines from the entrance exam stood in front of them. Targets acquired. Terminate them, a machine said. Freya saw there was five of them. Damn it. My quirks are no use here. Freya thought. Are those the zero-point villains from the practical test? Kaminari said. Where does the school get the money for these things? Yeyurazu asked. Todoroki lifted his arm up and put it to the ground as a machine reaches for him. Todoroki sends ice flying at the machine and freezes it. Todoroki ran under the machine. Freya took off after him, knowing it wouldn't be long before the machine would fall. She put a force field up as parts start falling. Freya made it out. She used a force field to stop one from attacking and kept running. Freya heard explosions and turned head to see Bakugo blasting over a machine. Freya smirked as she ran faster. Takayami and Siro were right behind him. They come to the second one and Freya gritted her teeth. It was a huge cannon. You're fast, Mina said. I got quick reflexes. We should take this one easy or we'll fall to our deaths. Freya said as Sue and Yuraka joined them. When did they have the time to build something like this? Yuraka asked. Freya's hands lit up and she created a fourth step and jumped on it. See you girls on the other side. Freya called as she spread out the steps and did jumps to get to the steps. She's showing off. Sue said. Sue jumped and landed on one of the ropes. Todoroki was using ice to slide across the rope, but he made it to the end and ran towards the steps. An explosion rang above them, and Freya looked up to see Bakugo flying over their heads. He's pissed, Freya said. You suck. Bakugo yelled at Todoroki. Freya landed on the rock at the end and ran up the steps and headed for the next obstacle. Signs were near it. They rid, danger mines. A minefield. It won't be good to use the steps. I'll have to be careful, Freya thought. Todoroki was already walking slowly across it. Freya stepped on and noticed round holes in the ground. She started slowly walking around them, but tried to move fast, keeping her eyes to the ground. Explosions started happening. Freya saw people go flying. Jeez, pay attention where you step. Bakugo goes blasting by, heading straight for Todoroki. Ha, ha, ha. It's over. Bakugo yelled. Freya watched as he blasted Todoroki. He came up to him. Your declaration of war was to the wrong person. Bakugo aimed an attack at Todoroki who dodged it. You guys know you're fighting in the middle of a minefield, Freya yelled. The two ignored her as they were fighting hand to hand as they ran. Freya wanted to bang the two's heads and if she got her hands on them. Explosions rang out behind them. Freya had a way to catch up and she picked up speed. Freya wanted to take advantage of them fighting. 
Suddenly, a huge explosion comes. Freya turns and her eyes widen as a pink cloud bigger than normal fills the sky. Freya put a force field up to stop herself from flying from the wind. Todoroki and Bakugo had stopped to look to see what was going on. Izuku came flying out of the pink cloud. Izuku. Freya said in shock as he goes flying over her and headed for the end of the landmine field. Freya ran towards Bakugo and Todoroki as Izuku flies over them. Bakugo takes off in a blast. Deku, what the hell do you think you're doing, huh? Bakugo said. Todoroki formed a path of ice and takes off running across it. Freya reached the ice. Freya quickly steps onto it using force at the bottoms of her feet to stop from sliding and give her a burst of speed. Izuku was slowing down, and Todoroki and Bakugo caught up to them. Aizawa was watching. What is she doing? Aizawa thought. Izuku flips in the air, holding the rope that was connected to what looked like a metal piece of the robot. Freya quickly picked up speed as Izuku brought the metal piece down on mines. An explosion rocks them. Freya put up a force field as Izuku takes off running. Bakugo and Todoroki were stunned as Freya runs past them in a quick of speed. See you at the end. Freya called over her shoulder as she runs after Izuku. Bakugo's eyes widen when he sees his best friend pass him in icy hot. Oh hell no. Bakugo thought as him and Todoroki took after Izuku and Freya. Aizawa hid a smile under his bandages to see his daughter not far behind Izuku. She was always a fast runner. In a stunning move, Midoriya has blasted past his classmates from 1A. And Aizawa not far behind him. I don't believe it. He cleared that minefield in an instant. Eraser head, your students are amazing. What the heck are you teaching them? Present Mike asked. Aizawa watched his students. Izuku was still leading the charge with Freya right behind him. This has nothing to do with me. Each of them is powered by their own drive to succeed. Aizawa said as Izuku got to the tunnel with Freya behind him and Todoroki and Bakugo trying to catch up. There you have it. Eraser head is a terrible teacher. Present Mike said. Aizawa felt a vein pop in his head. I'm what? Aizawa asked. Present Mike ignored him. Who would have imagined at the beginning of this race that the climax would be a non-stop mega mix of surprises? The first to make it back into the stadium is the first place winner. Present Mike said. Izuku ran out of the tunnel first. Izuku Midoriya is our champion. The audience cheers. Freya came out next to come in second with Todoroki third and Bakugo fourth. Freya grabbed her knees and gasped for air. She ran harder than normal and was now out of breath. Second. I'll take it. Freya whispered. Freya. Freya looked at Izuku. Good job. Freya smirked. You too. First place. Freya said. Freya looked up at the announcement booth to see her father watching. He gave her a nod and she smiled. He wasn't favoring any of his students, but he was cheering his daughter on silently. Bakugo was panting. Katsuki, Freya said, running over as students started coming out of the tunnel. Brett, what do you want? Bakugo said. Congratulations on getting fourth place. Freya said. And you're second. You took advantage of the nerd stunning us. Bakugo said, glaring towards Izuku. Just here to impress. Freya said with a smirk. Bakugo felt his heart leap looking at her. The contestants are pouring in one after another. Let's hear some applause for all our competitors as we prepare the results. Present Mike said. Freya, that was awesome what you did to get out of the tunnel. Mina said, jumping on Freya. Freya grunted. She smiled. Thanks, Mina. Freya said. You beat the hothead here. Hiroshima said. I heard that, shitty hair. Bakugo growled. Yeirazu came out with Mina clinging to her back with his balls. Freya ran over to her. Get this pervert off me. Yeirazu said. Freya grabbed the back of his gym shirt and pulled him off. Two. So close. Mina said noticing how close he was to Freya. Don't even think about it. Freya said as she dropped him headfirst into the ground. Oh. Mina said. Bakugo smirked as Freya and Yeirazu walked away from Maita. Thank you. Yeirazu said as they walked over to the others. She redid her gym top. The first game for the first years is finally over and what a game it was. Now, let's take a quick look at the standings, shall we? Midnight asked. They looked at the list. All of Wana made it through. Mina hugged Freya. Freya sighed in relief. That's awesome. Freya said. Only the top 42 will advance to the next round. But don't be to let down if you didn't make the cut. We've prepared other opportunities for you to shine. Midnight said. Midnight licked her lips. Now the real fun is about to begin. The chance to fully move yourselves into the limelight give it your best. Bakugo lets out a growl from behind Freya. Midnight lifts up her whip as a screen appears behind her. Let's see what we have in store for you next. The wheel starts turning. Will your wildest fantasies come to life? What could it be? The waiting is torture. Prepare yourselves for this. The spin stops on cavalry battle. Cavalry battle. Freya asked. I'm terrible at those. Kaminari said. It's not an individual event. I wonder how they'll split us up. Sue said. Allow me to explain. The participants will form teams of two to four people as they see fit. In theory, it's basically the same as a regular playground game. But there is one difference. Each player has been assigned a point value based on the results from the obstacle course. Midnight said. I get it, a point-based system like the entrance exams. That seems pretty simple. Sito said. So that means each team will have a different point value based on which students are on it. 
Yuraka said. That seems fair. Freya said. Uh huh. Mina said. Midnight got mad. Maybe you should shut up and let me explain things to you. Midnight growled. Freya bit her lip. The scoreboard of points show up behind Midnight. The point assignments go up by increments of 5, starting from the bottom. For example, 42nd place is worth 5 points, and 41st is worth 10. And the point value assigned to the first place contestant is 10 million. Freya gasped with the rest of the class. Maybe it's a good thing I got second. Freya thought. She looked at Izuku. So, whoever takes down his team will take first place and people will go after him. That's right. It's survival of the fittest, with a chance for those at the bottom to overthrow the top. Midnight said. This should be fun. Bakugo said. First years. These are the rules that you'll abide by. The game itself will last 15 minutes. Individual point values will be added together to reach your team total. Everyone will know how much you're worth thanks to your headbands. Swipe as many headbands as you can to raise your team's score. Stolen headbands must be worn from the neck up. So, the more you steal, the harder it'll be to manage them. And another thing. Even if your headband gets stolen or your team falls down, you can keep playing until time's up. It's anyone's game, then. Yeirazu said. And since there are 42 contestants, there will be 10 or 12 teams fighting on the field the entire time. Sido said. Sounds hard. Ayomi said. So, if you lose your headband at the beginning, you have more time to make up a plan. Mina said. I dunno, Mina. Maybe we should wait and see how the teams turn out before we start strategizing. Sue said. This is going to be rough. You may use your quirks as much as you like. Midnight said. Bakugo's eyes land on Freya. But there are still rules. Make a team fall on purpose and I'll slap you with a red card. You'll be disqualified. TCH. Bakugo said. The sign changes to make your team and it was 15 minutes. Now, you've got 15 minutes to build your teams. I recommend you get started. Midnight said. Freya. Freya turned to Izuku. Hey, Midoriya. Freya said. I was wondering if. Izuku started. Freya felt her arm get grabbed by a hand and she get pulled away. Not happening, nerd. She's on my team. Bakugo growled. Frey mouthed sorry to Izuku. You know all you had to do was ask me nicely. Freya said. The nerd was asking you first. I know your quirk more than him and others. I want you on my team. Bakugo said. People surround Bakugo. You should team up with me. Sido said. No, you definitely want me by your side. Mina said. Aomi looked like he was going to be sick. Freya knew he could only use his quirk for so long before he got sick. I don't want to beg, but please. Aomi said. Freya looked at Bakugo. You chose me, and you don't know who your other teammates will be. Freya asked. Bakugo sighed. Wait, remind me what your quirks are again and your names. Bakugo said. Freya sighed. You're kidding. We're your classmates. Mina said. Can you be so self-centered? Sido said. Freya seems to be more important than us. Siro said. Bakugo shot him a death glare. Bakugo. Bakugo looked to see Kirishima approaching them. I was gonna try Todoroki, but he already picked a group. So hey, we should team up. Hey, dumb hair. Bakugo said. My name is Kirishima. And my hair's not that different from yours. Come on. You wanna be the rider, right? Freya be one of your people on one of your side. So you're gonna need a strong front horse who won't be hurt by your blasts. Kirishima said. He hardened his arm. That'd be me. Bakugo thought for a minute. He's right. I'm best as one of your side people. You're too heavy. Freya said. I need someone with guts. Bakugo said. My quirk was made for this. I got you covered, man. And with Freya's force field we will be unstoppable. Let's go charging into battle together. Kirishima said. Bakugo gasped as Kirishima wrapped his arms around him and Freya. Bring it. Bakugo growls with an evil smile on his face and Freya smiles. Tape arms. Bakugo said, turning to Siro. It's Siro. Siro said. You're with us as well. Bakugo said. Freya saw teams starting to form. Izuku was with Yuraka and a pink-haired girl. Takayami was grabbed by Izuku. They started planning what they will do. Freya and Siro will be on the side and Kirishima be in front with Bakugo as the rider. A buzzer rings. Midnight was stretching her arms as everyone was given their headbands. Oh, goody. It's time to get this party started. Midnight said. Present Mike smacks Aizawa awake as he naps. Hey, hey, look alive. Present Mike said. Aizawa wakes up and looks out on the field. After 15 minutes to pick teammates and talk strategy, 12 cavalry teams are preparing to go head to head. I see some unexpected student combinations. Aizawa said. Looks like Freya is with Bakugo. Present Mike said. Aizawa wasn't surprised that Bakugo had Freya on his team already. Come on, everyone get your hands in the air. It's time for an arena thumping UA battle royale. Let me hear a scream. The audience cheered. Bakugo tightened the headband. Everyone ready. Bakugo said. Yes. Freya, Kirishima and Siro said. Let's go kill some people. Bakugo said. Not encouraging there. Kirishima said. Freya shook her head. Okay, all you first years. I hope you're happy with your chosen teams. Let's get this party started. One final countdown before the game starts. Three. Present Mike announced. Get him. Bakugo said. Freya rolled her eyes. One. Present Mike announced. Begin. Midnight said. The cavalry battle has finally started. 